with us today Dr. Kumar Sambhav, Head of Department and Director at UP Institute of Design, NOIDA, and Associate Dean of Value Education at Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. Since 2001, he has been actively involved in various capacities, serving as a resource person for basic and advanced level workshops, as well as faculty development programs on universal human values for over 15 years. Dr. Sambhav's dedication is reflected in his key contributions to essential textbooks such as a foundation course in human values and professional ethics and understanding human being, nature and existence comprehensively. Today, we are privileged to have, it, have him share his thoughts into the core content of value education. Welcome, sir. So we got introduced to the content of value education. Now we are going to gradually discuss the basic understanding in terms of human values. So in this session, I am going to talk about the role of education in holistic development. So we all are there as a part of this education process, providing education to the students. And we need to be clear about the goal of education, what the basic aspiration is when we are going to educate a child, isn't it? And we also need to be clear about the meaning of development and when can we say that the development is holistic. So today there is a lot of talk about development, but does development only mean adding more and more technologies uh, or we'll say gadgets, facilities, or it is something more than that? What can education mean? So we'll talk about that and in this process we'll also be clear about the basic human aspiration and the program for its fulfillment. So we could see as Dr. Ajni Sharora was mentioning that there is a need for human education sanskar and when the process of education sanskar is humane then we are able to develop a human worldview, a human perspective. So in the whole process of education if you see the child needs to develop this kind of perspective. If you talk to the students today, they are mostly focused on getting a good job. So if you ask a student in a bachelor's program, what is the motivation behind this bachelor's degree? So they say that I want to get a good job. And what does a good job mean? A good package. And, uh, and when will you say that the package is good? Then they will say it should be better than the neighboring you know, <laughs> student. <laughs> so the total focus is on the package, isn't it? And if you ask the child, like, do you really feel that after getting this package, your life is going to be happy and prosperous? Then they are in doubt. In fact, I was conducting such a session in one school of, in one college of management in Gaziabad, that is called Jaipuria College. And I asked all the students one question that how many of you want to become billionaire? How many of you want to become billionaire? Every student raised hand that yes, I want to become billionaire. Then I asked the students, how many of you want to become a, hap a happy person in life? Then again everybody raised hand. Then I asked that, are you really sure that after becoming a billionaire, you are going to be happy? And then they had a doubt. You know? Then I asked them, why do you want to become a billionaire? And then they started laughing, isn't it? So this is the state of education today, that the students do not have that holistic perspective, which can include their health, their well-being, their family, their relationships, isn't it? Their role in society. You can see that as the education is progressing, the families are disintegrating. The relationships are being questioned, isn't it? The race is mostly for more and more physical facilities, right? To become a unicorn. And every startup wants to become a unicorn. But what does this unicorn ultimately lead to is not clear. We are complaining about the problems in the nature. We are complaining about problems in the society. Isn't it? The geopolitics. But students are not able to have that kind of perspective which can give them the clarity, the resolution about all these problems. So can we have that kind of vision? And for that only, the human education sanskar is required. With that, the child will be able to contemplate on the human values. And value means my participation in the larger order. So for example, if you look at this presenter, isn't it? It is participating in the larger order. I can transition the slides with this. We took tea and snacks. It has its own role, you know? When you feel hungry, you go for lunch and breakfast and food and tea and snacks, isn't it? It has a role. 
in a similar manner we all have a role what is my role in my family if i go back to my family and family feels happier then i'm valuable to the family if everybody shuts the door even if i am a laureate isn't it even if i am a director but if everybody is shutting the door when i go back home i am not valuable to the family is that true so i have a role to play in the family i have a role to play in the society that role that participation is my value so as a human being we have to be clear what our role is isn't it now when i'm clear about that with that clarity only i can pick the right kind of skills which can enable me to live a value based life to play my role in a better way so i need to learn skills isn't it so for example when we are communicating i need to learn a language when i am working on a machine i need to learn about the technology of the machine but that is not complete when i am clear about my whole perspective the value then i can pick the right kind of skill and utilize it properly otherwise the utility is to be questioned isn't it and that's how we can see that as the technology is progressing now that ai is also there iot is there the menace to the humanity is also rising people are saying that in next 20 or 30 years maybe the humanity has to fight with machines that kind of scenario may emerge isn't it the kinds of crimes that are happening so then only i can pick the right kind of skills to live with human conduct and then i can become a pillar of human society human order human civilization if you look at the national education policy and all the policy that have been made throughout the ages we ultimately aim for a just and equitable society where everybody can be happy together everybody can be prosperous together isn't it that kind of aspiration do we have now for that when you talk about values then there would be certain basic guidelines as it was mentioned earlier also so whatever we take as a core content of education in terms of values has to be universal applicable to every human being applicable to man as well as woman as well as transgender applicable to you know a part this part of the country as well as that part of the country this sect as well as that sect for all time <coughs> isn't it it has to be applicable otherwise there is going to be friction in our living if something is applicable to a man but not woman then there would be friction in the relationship if something is applicable to one race and not the other then there would again be a struggle or a tussle in the society it has to be universal is that true do you think that this is true does it have to be universal or it can be also sectarian it has to be universal isn't it similarly it has to be rational it cannot be a course in morals where some dictum some set of do's and don'ts is being presented isn't it and you are always being taught in terms of should and shouldn't you should be doing this you should rise up uh, arise in the morning at 4 am sleep by 9 am 9 pm if you start dictating to the students students ask why parents are troubled these days because they might be following this kind of schedule and when they ask their children to follow that kind of schedule the children ask why why should i get up at 4 am why should i sleep at 9 pm what good has it made for you isn't it so it has to be rational it has to be applicable to logic so we cannot just give a set of do's and don'ts or should and shouldn't it has to be reasoned out we have to respond to every why and how of the student isn't it then only the child is able to explore within contemplate on that otherwise it only becomes a code of conduct it is not a code of conduct it is something to be understood so it has to be rational it has to be verifiable now how do i verify for example i am saying something from here now this is only a proposal for you to explore so how do you verify so you'll see that there is something innate in you what you call as natural acceptance something is naturally acceptable to me something is not acceptable to me naturally for example if i ask you do you want to be happy or unhappy what will you say happy from where did you get this answer so it is something innate to you you have been not trained to speak like this isn't it that comes to you very naturally and you do not want to be unhappy any moment that is your faculty of natural acceptance so whatever is being said here is a proposal for you to explore and refer to your natural acceptance similarly it has to come to my living how do i know that this is naturally acceptable to me or it is only a set of my thoughts then it has to come to my living when i go and interact with my spouse with my child 
with my student, the same thing needs to emanate in my living. And then it has to ensure happiness on either side. Isn't it? So it has to be verifiable and ultimately it has to lead to harmony at all levels of my living. Isn't it? Maybe tomorrow is a holiday, you don't have any office work, right? You are at home, the complete time is available to you, you are sitting by yourself. But as you sit by yourself, so many random thoughts start coming inside you. Isn't it? And there is so much of struggle inside you. There is no harmony in you. Will you feel happy? No. So you will see that essentially for happiness we are aspiring for harmony. Within me, in my thoughts I need to have harmony. In my relations I need to have harmony. With my body I need to have harmony, isn't it? At all levels of my living. So essentially the final outcome is that it has to lead to harmony. If we keep this as the basis for education, then only the skill education can be value guided and it can lead to a just and equitable society. Is this okay? The vision is okay? Any questions here? So we'll keep this interactive. You know, it's not that only it's going to be a monologue, I'm going to say certain things and you have to just listen. It has to be interactive. So we'll talk about the basic human aspiration, the fulfillment of basic human aspiration, what can be termed as holistic development and what would be the role of education in it. And this will also give you a idea of the full content of the workshop and the process of the workshop and the expected outcome also. So this is just one day workshop where we are going to have two sessions on the core content and then we'll have some you know, uh, content towards the end where we'll have some sharing. But to understand this clearly, you need to spend some more time because this is something to do with your own life, isn't it? So uh, we generally have workshop. Earlier when we were conducting workshop in face-to-face -face mode, we had eight days workshop. Then uh, during the pandemic, the online workshop is started. So we started having five days workshop. So now we are able to have five days face-to-face -face workshop and that also gives uh, a good clarity of the content. But this has to be followed by a complete workshop so that you can gain the clarity. Now, as I mentioned that this is only a proposal and this is a proposal, I will not say even that this is the proposal, okay. This is a proposal. I am also an explorer of this proposal. I am trying to verify within, live accordingly and the same way I am trying to reflect you know, the same thing for you so that you can verify and validate in your life. So when you go to verify, you can refer to your natural acceptance. So in place of agreeing or disagreeing to the proposal, that is not our expectation that you agree or disagree. The basic expectation is that you start investigating. You start questioning your own aspirations, your own concerns, your own value system, your own vision, your own perspectives. And once that process starts, it becomes something innate to you. So as we say that this workshop starts but never ends. This goes on in you. So a dialogue has started between me and you, but that dialogue essentially has to go within you, isn't it? So no need to assume it as true or false, but rather reflect on your natural acceptance. So it is a process of dialogue between me and you to start with, but gradually it becomes a dialogue within your own self. And see that there are two realities associated with each one of us. One is what I am, the way I think, the way I behave, the way I live, the way I take care of my body, the way I... Uh, have my role in the family, the way I nurture my family, the way I teach, you know, my attitude, my likes and dislikes, this is all what I am. At the same time, there is another reality, what I really want to be, my natural acceptance. Maybe I am not the way I really want to be. For example, if I ask you, do you want to be happy, you say yes. Do you want to be unhappy, you say no. But if you ask yourself, are you happy all the time? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Sir is saying absolutely not. Right? <laughs> so it means we are not the way we naturally accept to be. There is a gap. And we will see that this gap is the whole set of problems in our life. If I am not the way I really want to be, I am in trouble. I am in problems. I have issues, isn't it? If I am the way I really want to be, I am resolved. I am at peace with me. You will see that it is not the issue that you are at not at peace with somebody else. You are not at peace with yourself. If you are not at peace with yourself, you are not at peace with others also. If you are at peace with yourself, you can be at peace with others also. So if I am the way I really want to be, I would like to continue with it, otherwise I would like to change my ways. So for example, if I ask you, what is naturally acceptable to you? 
feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? What is acceptable to you naturally? Relationship. Ask anybody on this planet. Everybody says what is acceptable naturally is feeling of relationship. But just ask yourself, are you always having the feeling of relationship with other human beings? No. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Fewer occasions yes, most of the occasions no. <laughs> that could also be possible, isn't it? So what is acceptable to me naturally is the feeling of relationship, but I might not be having that feeling all the time, isn't it? So that is the gap between what you are and what you really want to be. So the purpose of this workshop is to initiate or strengthen this internal dialogue. If that dialogue is already on in you, well and good. If not, we can initiate that dialogue. It generally so happens no, that whenever we face problems, we try to borrow solutions. So we read some books, we listen to some discourses, okay? we'll also do some exercises and something. But what we are doing, basically, we are trying to fetch solution from outside. That will not work in continuity. Unless this dialogue is there in, initiated in you, unless you are able to address your own natural self, you, know, you, never, you never get resolved. So most of the time you are trying to borrow solutions from outside, borrow happiness from outside. And that's how it does not get you know, innate to us. So we need to start this internal dialogue. So as I was asking, let me ask a few more questions. So I asked the first question, do we want to be happy? Yes or no? Yes. Do we want to be prosperous? To say, okay. <laughs> okay. So you want to have prosperity. And do you want to have the continuity of the two? Yes. So if you look at this side, you know, we say yes. Now just ask yourself, are we happy? Not always. Yeah. Do we feel prosperous? <laughs> Maybe sometimes yes, sometimes no. Or don't know. Yeah. <laughs> And if you ask yourself, is there continuity of the two? So certainly no. There is no continuity. Sometimes we feel happy, sometimes we feel unhappy. Isn't it? So you can see the gap there. Now why this gap between what we really want to be and what we are? Why this gap is there? Yes, I said a higher, higher goal. Higher goal. Yeah, we are setting maybe higher goals, okay. In terms of what? In terms of money, yeah. in terms of position, <laughs> in terms of power. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of yeah. yeah, that could be one reason that we are setting higher goals in terms of money, power, position and that is not being met, okay. So as Sir is saying that, then we are, what we are trying to do, we are trying to fill this gap by more money, more power, more position, higher position, isn't it? Any other opinion? So just find out that to fulfill this basic aspiration, is our effort to understand the true meaning of happiness and prosperity and ensure it currently? Are we really working to understand the true meaning of happiness, the true meaning of prosperity and ensure it or we are just working for accumulation of physical facility? <laughs> so you see that mostly we are working for accumulation of physical facility, assuming that this will ensure happiness as well as prosperity, isn't it? So if my child is asking for an iPhone you know, and I feel that yes, I should be giving the iPhone, so I should have a higher salary. So I work to get a better salary. If the spouse is asking for more facilities, we try to work more you know, for better facilities in the house, isn't it? But ultimately, we are working for only for accumulation of physical facility. Now, for example, you get the salary and you gift a very costly kind of garment to your spouse at the month end, isn't it? But while gifting, So if you are not happy, you, yeah. Unless you are happy, you cannot be healthy. Unless you are healthy, you cannot be happy. So that is a missing thing. <laughs> I'll come to that. I'll come to that, yes. <laughs> nice. That's a good point. I'll come to that. So maybe you gift 
your spouse a very costly garment you know, when you get the salary but your smile is little you know, sharp and that is somewhat amusing to the wife or the husband. So you will see that even though you gifted a very costly garment to the spouse but the feeling of affection was not conveyed. Will that make the other happy? No. So if we are only working for accumulation of physical facility but we are not clear about happiness, we are not clear about prosperity, then that end is not going to be met. So just find out, have we assumed that happiness and prosperity will be ensured when we have enough physical facility? No? Nice. Nice if no, okay? But have we assumed, just try to find out. And if not, then what effort are we making other than accumulation of physical facility? Just try to look at your schedule throughout the day, in 24 hours of a day, you know, how we are spending the time. In the morning we get up and we have a kind of charter to you know, obey. Since morning I have to do these many things at home, in the office, then coming back home, I have to do, do uh, these many things. And all the time you'll see that I'm planning something or the other. And that gets largely diverted towards, diverted towards physical facility. Even though we might not intend to do it, but most of the time or all the time we are working for physical facility. And in that process, while working for five days a week, six days a week, our relationship get distorted. Then we plan that, okay, at, on this weekend we are going out, you know, we'll go to some exotic place, we'll go to this restaurant to eat outside. What we are trying to do, we are trying to patch up the damage that we have made while working on physical facility. But seldom are we clear that what is going wrong? Why the happiness is not being ensured even though you know, we have been working so much for you know, happiness? Maybe we have not understood the true meaning of happiness or the true meaning of prosperity. Why is it happening that a farmer in Vidarv area where there is no very well, a shortage of physical facility, he is also committing suicide? and a daughter or a son of a very rich parent is also committing suicide. Why is that happening? It might be the case that happiness and physical facility are two different things. Can it be? So, what effort are we making other than accumulation of physical facility? Let us try to find out. <laughs> yeah, okay. For the physical well being, we are trying to make it nice. Say it again, sir. Sir, uh, they derive happiness by doing practically in, in some cases. And sir, for there is uh, without uh, uh, doing something which uh, our spouse doesn't like in front of him. By this way, we can make them happy. And if you respond, if you become happy in the circumstances, then they are very, very happy. So therefore, that is the one way of uh, <laughs> making them happy, allowing them to do Something but which do, do, we don't like in front of us. But can these techniques continue? Can we have continuity of happiness through these techniques? No, if you allow, that is also one <laughs> way of making them happy, sir. Pardon? See, happiness, uh, it is only perspective. Whenever you have, you have, you have sadness, to feel, enjoy the happiness. Even in Gita, they say, you have a Yeah, so already there is a state of unhappiness. So you need not create unhappiness more enough so that you can enjoy happiness. So unhappiness is already there. But are we really clear about the program for happiness? So find it out. These are some basic pertinent issues, isn't it? There is a story about a professor that he was looking for his ring below a street light one night. So whoever passed by just asked him, Professor, what has happened? 
when he says that my ring has got lost, I'm looking for my ring. So gradually some more colleagues and students also joined him. It was more than an hour, but the ring was not to be found. So one person asked him that, are you really sure that the ring has fallen here? We have been looking for past one hour. <laughs> he said, no, no, ring has fallen in the pond outside. Then why are you looking for the ring here? He says, you can't see that the light is on here. What is happening, our whole training, our whole education is focused on physical facilities. You start to, uh, looking at the curriculum right from childhood, from primary education to PhD. All that time we are talking about physical facilities. So we are trying to look for solution you know, for all problems in life in terms of more and more physical facilities or better physical facilities, newer physical facilities. That is the gross mistake that is taking place. Now you see that when an animal has lack of physical facility, it becomes uncomfortable. When it gets physical facility, it becomes comfortable. For example, when a cow gets a stomach full of grass, it becomes comfortable, sits and chews the cud. Say there is a cow in the house, you provide the cow you know, twice, uh, food twice a day, water thrice a day, provide a shade, the cow is very comfortable, sits and chews the cud. If you do the same thing with a child, will it work? It will not work. Because the imagination of a child is much more developed, isn't it? When a human being has lack of physical facility, he becomes uncomfortable, unhappy. But once he gets the physical facility, he forgets about it and starts thinking about hundred other things. And this is a common scenario. If you just look at our society in India, two generations back, we are short of the physical facility. You know? Not many cars to be seen, not many houses had television sets. Now, almost every house has a car, you know, every hand has a mobile, isn't it? So many facilities has gone, have gone up. So, at that point of time, we might think that once these people will have adequate physical facilities, their problems will be solved. But that is not happening. And that is not going to happen also. So, when we have lack of physical facility, we feel perturbed, disturbed, isn't it? We feel that, yes, our life is, has become a hell, it's not a good life. But once we have physical facility, we simply forget about it and start thinking about you know, hundred other things. For example, if you don't have a house of your own, all the time it is rocking in your imagination that you know, I should have a house of my own. You know. I have worked for these many years you know, in my job, I should have a house of my own. Once you have a house of your own, you simply forget about it and start looking for some other, you know, that I have to now save money, so why not invest in house? You start thinking of you know, some other house. One person was caught on the charge of corruption in Delhi and when he was caught, it was found that he had 1,000 houses booked in his name. <laughs> Isn't it? So you'll see that when we lack physical facility, we feel disturbed. But when we have physical facility, we simply forget about it and start thinking about 100 other things. So check for yourself if you feel happy every day that you are getting enough to eat. If I do not have enough to eat in my house, and it is a big question of my life. But once we have enough to eat, we simply forget about it. We take it for granted. What we have, we take for granted. And what we don't have, we start aspiring for it. That is a common phenomenon. Is it true? So when a human being has lack of physical facility, he or she becomes uncomfortable, unhappy. But once he or she gets the physical facility, simply forgets about it, starts thinking about hundred other things. Just try to look into your own imagination, isn't it? We could see that in the pandemic, you know, since the families had to work from home, there was a lot of saving. So just after the pandemic was over, almost every house had changed the car. They had a small car, maybe a simple, you know, uh, this Marathi Alto or something. <laughs> After the pandemic was over, they had this big Breja you know, and, you know, and Kia and all those cars, big cars. Why is that happening? That car was enough. Maybe there are only two or three members in the family. That car was sufficient to transport them. But very soon they had a bigger car because they started thinking about hundred other things once they had this particular car. This is a kind of common phenomenon. So just one pertinent question here is, let me see, if you know how many pairs of clothes you have. 
how many of us here are aware how many pairs of clothes we have? Are we aware? We can raise your hands. <laughs> nice, nice to see. Maybe we are not aware of how many pairs of clothes we have and the next day when you are going out from the college and you find a mall on the way you know, and sale, sale, sale is written there. You know, buy two, get five. <laughs> you simply enter the mall, isn't it? Why is that happening? Maybe we have not evaluated what we have, isn't it? So one homework in this LDP is also that when you go back home today, count your clothes. <laughs> We have got sharing from many that when they started counting the clothes, they could see, they could discover that, okay, these have, they have these many pairs of clothes. Maybe it was gifted 10 years back. They have not opened the trunk also. And suddenly they found that this is available, isn't it? So if there were a shortage of clothes, it would have been a problem for us. But now that we have clothes, we may not even know about, you know, know how many we have. And yet we may keep collecting more and more. Does it happen? Now it, there is time of social media, no? So if you go to a marriage, then the pics are floated on the social media. And now you have to, next time when you have to go to a marriage, the same garment should not appear on the social media. <laughs> you have to get a new one. <laughs> So every occasion you have to purchase a new cloth, isn't it? When you don't know how many clothes we really need, we can be in this situation. We have a problem when we don't have clarity about our needs. So can we have this clarity about our needs? Can we find out how much we need, what we need? We'll discuss briefly about that, isn't it? So physical facility is necessary for human being, as we have been discussing. So we need physical facility, isn't it? We need food, we need growth, we need shelter, isn't it? We need instruments. But something more is also required. It is necessary but not adequate. Yes. So you mentioned about happiness now, sir. We started with happiness the endorphins which gets released. So just for the cloth uh, agenda, so maybe that the human has a tendency. So if you wear a new cloth, etc., the endorphins which gets released, and that adds to our happiness. So that is again... Yeah, there are a few problems associated with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First of all, it is temporary. Yeah. That secretion of endorphin is temporary because of some sensation. Secondly, it is indefinite. It is not definite. The same garment may not appeal to you the same way <laughs> next time, isn't it? And then there is dependence on something outside for my happiness. If I am not able to manage it, then it may you know, and bring unhappiness to me, isn't it? Pardon? Yes, yeah. It depends on others also, for sure. The same garment may be appreciated by some, maybe even uh, ignored by some, maybe criticized by some, all those possibilities are there, isn't it? So there is no definiteness, no continuity of happiness when we go for such measures. So something more is also required. Now just try to find out, is the unhappiness in our families more due to lack of physical facility or more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship? relationship. Any other opinion? Second one. And it's so much so that you can see that in the society or in the families, physical facilities are going up, but the lack of fulfillment also is going up in the relationship. Even if you feel sometimes that it is due to lack of physical facility that the problems are there, then I'll give a very simple example. Let's say there are four members in a family and every person requires maybe five chapatis in a day, something that we eat. There is a requirement of 20 chapatis in a day. If someday there are not uh, 20 chapatis available, only 18 chapatis are available, isn't it? Will there be a fight in the family or not? 
when there is a feeling of relationship, will feed the other first and then eat. And then join together to produce more the next day. But there is lack of fulfillment in the relationship, will snatch from the other and not join together also the next day. Now this is what is happening. You can see the disputes of property are going up in the society. The disputes in the marital relationships are going up. The facilities are going up in the family, marital disputes are also going up, disputes of prosperity are also going up. Why is that happening? Because the relationship is missing. If you go to the family courts, you know, there is one family court in Ghaziabad in NCR where I live. Not less than 1000 cases are filed every month and most of the cases are to do with either property disputes or divorces. So on one hand, you know, we are becoming a 3 trillion economy, 4 trillion economy, 5 trillion economy, on the other hand, the divorces are also going up. If you look at the western countries, those who are even the Scandinavian countries placed on the top, you know, there you can see the divorces are more than 50 percent, 53 percent, 54 percent. In our country it is presently between 2 to 3 percent, isn't it? So called developed nations have more problems. Why is that happening? So maybe they have missed out the basic point that relationships are also important. By only adding physical facility, our family is not going to be happy or prosperous. Is that true? And then try to find out how much time and effort we are investing for physical facility and how much time and effort we are investing for fulfilling our relationship. Yeah, more time on the physical facility and when we find that fulfillment is lacking, we try to patch up through physical facility. <laughs> by gifting something or by spending time together you know, on a holiday trip or something like that. But our behavior, our conduct, our feeling for each other, that may get missed out. If there is lack of trust between spouses, so whatever you do in terms of physical facility, that gap is not going to be removed because there is a lack of trust, isn't it? If there is a lack of affection you know, for the children or in the children for the parents, that gap is not going to be removed by more and more physical facilities. So the unhappiness is more due to lack of fulfillment in the relationship, but most of the time and effort is spent for physical facility. What do you think? If we don't have the self-satisfaction, uh, definitely we won't get, we won't feel happy. Yeah, even if you provide just physical facilities. Yes. yes, yes, for sure. For example, let's say in a family, both husband and wife are earning, okay? So there is more physical facility in the family, but they are trying to compete with each other. So what will happen in the family? Isn't it? Maybe they are competing in terms of post or money or fame. Then what will happen in the family? Oh, you have these many publications, I have those many publications. <laughs> Isn't it? So that happiness is not going to be ensured. So for human being, physical facility is necessary, but relationship is also necessary. Fine. So just physical facility cannot do for the human being. On examining carefully, we find that this is a fundamental difference between animals and human being. Physical facility necessary for animals and necessary for human beings also. However, for animals, physical facility necessary as well as largely adequate. The animals can do with physical facilities, but certainly the humans can't do. Now let's say if a person commits a crime, he or she is sent to jail. In the jail, you get the physical facility. You get food, you get clothes, you get shelter. Isn't it? What is missing is? Freedom. Relationship. Yeah. You are not connected to the family, you are not connected to the society and that becomes a punishment. Isn't it? So for human being it is necessary but not adequate for sure. 
And if you feel that, yes, it is necessary for animals also, it is much, much more needed for human beings. So when you look at the set of needs for us as a human being, we require two things, physical facility as well as relationship. It is necessary and largely adequate for animals, but certainly not adequate for human beings, the physical facility. So now just try to see our curriculum in education, in how many courses we are talking about relationship. Is there a single course in BTEC in which we talk specifically about relationship? <laughs> Isn't it? Now tomorrow if that student is not able to have a healthy family, happy family, then who is responsible? Yeah. We lived by ourselves and we should be making the students learn through us by making ourselves doing what we want. But what would be the basis of living? How do I live in relationship if I do not have understanding about relationship? <laughs> no, it cannot be learnt as a subject <laughs> or a coursework. That's what I'm meaning. Pardon? It cannot be learnt as a subject or a coursework. You can live within yourself and be in good relationship with the students or the teachers or the community whom you face every day, every hour, things like that. You be an example or a role model. Yeah. So that could be one part, okay? yes. but just by looking at you, one cannot exactly make out what is going on inside you unless you talk about it. So you have to talk about relationship. With respect to students, they come from different value systems. With respect to students, they come from different, with, uh, different value systems. So it is absolutely necessary that the dialogue uh, of this kind yeah. is... Uh, the beliefs could be different when yes. you do not explore together. Yes. So they the, might carry different assumptions about relationships. They might carry different assumptions about human beings. Okay. So universal One may be viewpoint has to, to be think given in a particular to them. Way. Universal viewpoint has to be given to them. Yeah. So something has to be discussed, something has to be talked about, you know, because this is an important aspect of life. So it is a life skill, I feel, relationship we should see. Observe and our father, mother are the first teachers. Mata, Pita, Guru, Deva. So it has to be learned or inculcated in our minds by the student, provided the parents are very good with good karma. This is what I feel. Yeah, see, of course, the education starts with the parents. But if the parents also are not able to ensure it, then it becomes the role of teachers. Because after our role is over, the child is going to the society. If the parents had that kind of understanding, well and good. If not, then we have to fulfill that lack of you know, competence in the child. So we have to at least include this as an essential component of our curriculum. We have to talk about relationship. And we will see that when we are talking also about certain issues of relationship, we are mostly talking about opinions of others. Mr. XYZ said this, you know, Mr. ABC said this, and the students remember that kind of theory and then they just reproduce the same thing in the examination, even if they talk about the you know, uh, societal uh, issues or the relationships in the society. That kind of approach will not work. And when we are talking to the students also, we are giving a code of conduct. You have to do this, you don't have to do this. If you come late, this is the punishment. If you do this, that is the punishment. And that again becomes a kind of you know, jail for the child. Most of the time we are providing either sermons that you should be doing this, you should not be doing this, or providing a code of conduct. If you do this this way, then this is going to be a punishment. If you do the other way, then that is going to be the punishment and things like that. And the student is wondering, now from where will I get this kind of understanding? If the parents are not able to provide, the school teachers are not able to provide, we in the higher education not able to provide, then who is going to provide? And when the student becomes a criminal the next day, he becomes corrupt, he becomes a kind of you know, criminal the next day, then ultimately who is at fault? That same criminal, if you see in the society, was an innocent child 18 or 20 years back. He or she did not get that kind of understanding in the family, in the school, in the college, in the environment, and now he has turned into a criminal. And the same thing applies to us also. If I do not get exposed to this kind of content since childhood, how will I develop my understanding? You'll see that in the higher education, students are reading books, you know, some motivational, listening to motivational talks, 
uh, trying to do something outside the curriculum so that they can be at peace, isn't it? And that kind of effort we can see we have been also doing. So it has to be essential part of the curriculum relationship. We have to specifically talk about it. I'll see that even though we recognize the need for relationship, we do get into arguments, opposition, fights, even in the family, with close friends, with colleagues at work, in the marketplace. Now, every time we have a fight, we want to resolve it. We say sorry, we patch up, we promise not to fight in future. But does it continue? So, <laughs> pardon? Oh, you are, you are enjoying it? <laughs> Maybe there was some heated argument in the family, okay? Tick. And you felt bad about it. Otherwise, it will be monotonous, sir. Just you try to find out. So, we should have some unhappiness. Then only we will value the happiness. Okay, throughout so, the day today, whenever you try to, you want to become unhappy, just let me know. No, sir. No, <laughs> I am not telling like that. <laughs> Sir, uh, the ultimately we should have the acceptance. How do you know? First of all, find out about yourself. How do you know that you are happy or not? No, so you are looking at this. that I can, you know, be unhappy. Things are not working out in the university or some other place according to the way I want it, it is, I am, I am unhappy. Things will work out, then it is happy. But don't you think the concept of duality is a part of our Indian culture itself, where we say Ardhanari. I mean, there has to be opposites, isn't it? If it was just happiness, then life would be really a boring place to be. We will become like a robo, isn't it? <laughs> See, Earlier we could see Madam, that there is already… Sir, uh, sir, see, the thing is ultimately, definitely there will be ups and downs. It's a sine wave curves, our life. The thing is, we should teach the children to accept things, whether it is failure or uh, winning. Both should be taken in a similar, uh, what I can say, emotional feeling. If we can achieve that, well and good, sir. So what does it mean? Let me little talk about it. So there could be ups and downs outside, but I don't want to have ups and downs within me. Yeah. There should be balance. Yeah. Not, but not balance. I'll say that I need to be in harmony all the time. So the same question again. Do you want to be happy only sometimes or all the time? We cannot have uh, the harmonious people around us. No, there no, no. Let me ask the same basic question which I put up in the first slide. Okay. Now let me ask that question again. Do you want to be happy only sometimes or every moment? Not always, sir. Not always. Okay. Okay. So, see, I'll tell you. It could be the case that you're not happy all the time. But take it as an assignment. Whenever you want to feel unhappy, note the time. <laughs> whenever, <laughs> whenever you want to feel unhappy, note that time. No, sir. No, I am not telling like that. If any hit back comes also, we should accept, thinking that this, this time also will pass by. Yeah. So that is fine. So I am saying that situations may change outside. That is fine. But within me, I need to be in a state in which I want to continue. I need not be perturbed by the situation outside. This is what you are saying. That is a state of happiness. That I am in harmony within, whatever may be happening outside. Yeah. I will not say that you term failure as success. See, again, we have to understand what failure is and what success is. So I have to be clear about my basic aspiration. If my basic aspiration is being fulfilled, I am happy and I am successful. I may be achieving so many things outside, right? But within me, I am not at peace with me. Then am I successful? And when I am successful by being happy, being at peace with me, then I can do much more outside. When I am at peace with me, I can interact with people happily. Otherwise, I keep on picking problems in my relationships 
and also generate relationships and generate problems in the relationship. I am naturally healthy if I am happy within. If I am not happy within, I have mental disorders, psychological issues. And then I may be having multiple doctors to address my problems. But ultimately at the core, I am not resolved. And that is the aspiration of yourself, that is the aspiration of the students also. We are teaching skills, we are learning skills. But you can see how much effort we have to put today to imbibe the skills. Because the students are not feeling connected to the skills. Why should I come every day? Then you say that attendance is mandatory. You know? Why should I not cheat in the examination? You say, no, this is mandatory. <laughs> Why we have, we have to make so much of things you know, mandatory? Because the child is not able to relate oneself to what is valuable to the child. Isn't it? And that's why you have to enforce so many things. If the child is explore, able to explore within, then naturally he can aspire for the right thing. Naturally he can see what is valuable, what is not valuable. Then, as it is happening gradually, that now the education material is available online. If the child is willing to learn, he or she can learn. Our role is only to facilitate. So earlier also that was there, in hard copies it was there. But since the students are not feeling motivated to learn those skills, we have to work so much. And that is all non-productive work, if you see. Isn't it? If you start talking about the basic understanding that has to be developed in the child, the child will start working by oneself. And so much of extra effort that we have to make today will not be required. The same thing applies to us also. So even though you don't want to do a fight does take place once again, you want the other to improve and the other wants us to improve. Does it happen? That we are pointing fingers at outside and we are saying that you are wrong, you have to improve. He's saying you are wrong, you have to improve. Right? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> we are trying to change the whole world without changing us. <laughs> See this happening or not? Our incidences of reaction, not speaking to the other, not even listening to the other. Arguments, debates, divorces, increasing or decreasing. And now, this has become quite explicit. You just look at the data of divorces, splitting of families, isn't it? One student came to IIIT Hyderabad to attend a workshop. And we were talking about relationship and family for four days. It was an eight-day workshop. And on the fifth day, he was completely intrigued. He said that all the time using this word family, first define what family is. <laughs> because he had come from Germany. It so happened that his parents divorced. His father married someone, his mother married someone, and he's without home. He says that, how can I find out my family? In our country, at least, this is not the scenario. But if we keep on only working on physical facilities, this is going to be happening. This is going to happen, isn't it? So for us, relationship is not something new. Family is not something exotic word. You know, we are acquainted with what family is, isn't it? So these are happening, these are increasing. Explore your close relationships in the family, with friends, in the workplace, in the society. So in spite of our acceptance for relationship, why is it happening? Even though we accept to be you know, having healthy relationship, good relationship, why is it happening? Pardon? Comparison. Comparison, okay. So we have one own perspective, somebody is having someone's own perspective and the two are not matching. We have own notions, the other person has one's own notions. Fear of acceptance. Pardon? Fear of acceptance. Fear of acceptance. If I go by his way, I am going to be subdued. If I go her way, I am going to be subdued. That kind of fear is there in the relationship. The other may dominate over me. The other may make me, you know, go by one's own way, that kind of fear is there. We are doubting intention of each other. Yeah. Nice. So let us find out our perspective about relationship. Do we want to live in relationship that is harmony with others? Yes or no? Yes. Do we want to live in opposition with others? 
No. But look at the third option. We believe living has to be necessarily in opposition with others. And that is the struggle for survival and the survival of the fittest. So we might be carrying notions within like this. That there is struggle for survival and only the fittest can survive. So on one hand, we are aspiring for good relationship. But on the other hand, we are carrying some notions within what has come to us through education. Now this kind of theory was given 100, 150 years back. And it was based on some study done on animals and plants. And some conclusion was given. It was not rightly proposed in the education. We wrongly assumed it and now we are trying to live by it. Now there is a strong notion today that they struggle for survival, only the fittest can survive. Does it apply to us also? For example, I'll give you an example here. Let's say there is a house in which there are only two persons. One is strong and the other is weak. And the food in the house is sufficient only for two, one person. There is one strong person, there is one weak person. The food is sufficient only for one person. Going by this principle, who will get the food? The strong person, right? who is the fittest to survive. But if the strong person is the mother and the weak person is the child, then who will get the food? <laughs> now when there is relationship, these kinds of theories don't hold good. But we are carried away by these kinds of notions, wrong notions. For example, competition. We assume that competition is necessary in education. Is that really true? We have to question all these things. When we are working for excellence, competition becomes redundant. But when you are not working for excellence, then all these things come into picture. If I have the feeling of relationship, why will I struggle with the other? If I do not have that feeling of relationship, then only that struggle will start. Then I have to prove myself to be the fittest, otherwise there is no need for that. And you can see in the family also. If the eldest son gets a job, he starts taking care of the entire family. Otherwise, he will start you know, struggling with the family to save money. That may not happen, isn't it? So what is our present perspective? Which view do we promote at home, in the family, in schools and colleges, in the society? Now you can just see, since childhood, you know, we are pressurizing the child that there is so much of competition outside, there is cutthroat competition. If you don't do better, then others will simply kill you. He has so much of fear, you know, so much of anxiety within. And that's how we can see the students who are preparing for IIT JE, they are committing suicide. In quota, almost every month, one student is committing suicide. Even after going into IITs, the students are committing suicide. One girl in IIT Kanpur you know, committed suicide and it was found that in one course she could not get A grade. <laughs> it is laughable outside, you know, but within that child you can see how much is you know, yeah, anxiety and pressure going on, isn't it? Yes, the students have to start, the students feel that they, if they do not compete in a particular exam, you know, their life is not going to be of any use, isn't it? That kind of feeling is there. So is it a naturally acceptable view? So we can see that for fulfillment in relationship, it is necessary to have right understanding about relationship. We need to understand relationship. We need to understand human being. To begin with, I need to understand myself. Isn't I might be collecting information about you know, Moon and Mars and Saturn, but I might not be aware about myself. <laughs> that is the scenario today. We might give a talk on geopolitics for a whole day, but the politics that is going on inside me <laughs> might not be clear to me. So there is another need of the human being and that is right understanding. So that I can understand myself, I can understand my relationship, you know, my interaction with other human beings, my role in the society, my need for physical facility. How do I make out how much physical facility I require? 
for myself, for my family, unless I am clear about that, can I ever feel prosperous? Can I ever have the feeling that I have enough? Can we have the feeling that yes, I have enough number of clothes, I have enough food in the family, I have even, even enough number of houses? That feeling of having enough cannot be there if the right understanding is not there. So with right understanding, we have clarity about relationship with human being. We are able to fulfill the relationship. We are able to get to know the intention of each other. We are able to get to know the feeling that binds us together, the feeling of affection. And we have clarity about how much physical facility we need. So there are three things which are necessary for a human being. Right understanding, relationship and physical facility. But let us find it out. Are all three required or is something redundant? Are all the three required or something can be dropped from here? Pardon? Ji? All three are required. And if the three things are fulfilled in life, do I require anything more than this? If I am able to ensure all the three things in my life as a human being, do I need anything more than this? Yes. What? <laughs> more of what? <laughs> See, satisfaction is a natural outcome of right understanding. So when I am able to see my need for relationship, see my need for physical facility, you know, clearly, then I feel satisfied that yes, it is available. I have more than what I require. Positive thinking. Positive thinking, Positive thinking again is a natural outcome of right understanding. Pardon? Yeah, so when we say positive thinking, it could be based on right understanding also that when I am able to see that intention of every human being is fine, the need for physical facility is limited, I have more than what I require, every human being related to me, then I naturally have you know, positive thinking, I do not have any negative thoughts in me. The other way could be that I do not have this understanding and I am trying to condition myself, think positively, think positively, that will not work. So when I go by right understanding, I naturally think positively. If not, then I have to condition myself, but that could only be a temporary solution. So are we working for all the three? Are we working for all the three? So we need to work, right? <laughs> Generally, when we invite somebody to a workshop and say that this is a week-long workshop, then people say, okay, week long workshop, I have to spend one week. <laughs> Out of 52 weeks in a year, I have to spend only one week for right understanding, but that is also not available. <laughs> so are we really working for it? One by 52, you, know, you can see what is the percentage, less than 0.02 percent. <laughs> At least I have to spend that much time working for right understanding. Then only we can say that yes, I have prioritized it. <laughs> yes. So we have to really find out, we have to be serious about it. And are we really working for right understanding? Are we really working to understand relationship? Or simply we are fulfilling the relationship as per the norms? This is the way to fulfill the relation with the child, this is the way. And how do I get the way? Through certain norms that I get from the family, from the surrounding, from the books. We are going by certain conditioned norms without ever questioning them or understanding them. So if all three are required, what would be the priority? So if all three are required, what would be the priority? Yeah. <laughs> 
nice. So the priority has to be like this. <laughs> so right understanding comes at the first priority. With right understanding, I am able to understand the feelings in the relationship which can be naturally acceptable to us. You know, which can be mutually fulfilling, trust, respect, affection. I can explore, I can understand these feelings. And then when I fulfill them, it leads to mutual happiness. I am happy, the other is also happy. Isn't it? With right understanding only, I am able to make out the physical facility that I require. How much food I require, how many clothes I require, how many houses I require. It just came in a discussion with somebody that he was planning to purchase a house and he was not clear whether he should be going for a 2 BHK house or 3 BHK house. <laughs> right? So I told him that it is not very important whether you go for a 2 BHK or 3 BHK. More important is that how many people in the family can sit together in one room. <laughs> if there is no, the relationship is lacking, then everybody will sit you know, oneself in one room then even 4 or 5 BHK will not do. <laughs> but if there is relationship in the family, they will sit together. You will see that if there is harmony in the family, most of the time we are found in one place. If there is harmony in the family, most of the time we are found in one place. If there is lack of harmony in the family, we are mostly found in different places in the house. Isn't it? So with right understanding only, I can make out the need for physical facility. And I can feel prosperous that yes, I have enough. Pardon? I can find out that yes, I have more than what I require. I have enough. And then that can ensure mutual prosperity with the nature also because when I am able to make out the need for physical facility rightly, then I do not exploit the nature more and more. Presently, if you see, you know, we are drawing so much of water from the ground that there is shortage of water, the underground water. There is shortage of minerals, shortage of, you know, uh, so many supplies from the nature. There is water pollution, there is air pollution, isn't it? We are doing so much of deforestation and ultimately we are suffering. It is being said that the way the temperature is rising on the planet, if it rises by two more, uh, like, 2 degrees Celsius more, then the rise of the sea levels will be so much that the coastal areas, you know, will start drowning. Chennai being, you know, like Tamil Nadu, coastal areas and Kerala, they will also start drowning. And then the people have to move to the plateaus and the plains. You can see the kind of, you know, chaos that it will create. So if you are not able to make out the need for physical facility rightly and you keep on exploiting the nature, then ultimately we are going to suffer. But if I understand it rightly and fulfill the nature, I am prosperous, the nature is also enriched in the process. And if you have these two in life, mutual happiness in every relationship, mutual prosperity, every moment, what else do you need as a human being? You can see that our all aspirations, our all goals, you know, all programs intend at this only. If I am able to ensure these two, mutual happiness in every relationship, mutual prosperity in every interaction with the nature, then what else do I require? This is all that I require. Is that fine? But on the other hand, what we are doing today, as ma'am was also saying, so we are largely focused here. This part is missing. We do not have time for right understanding. We are not clear about relationship. Isn't it? And then there is unhappiness and we are making others also unhappy. Similarly, there is lack of feeling of prosperity within and we are also exploiting the nature. So there is deprivation inside and we are depriving human being as well as the rest of nature. We do not have clarity about the need for physical facility. And you can see this is the problem on the planet. Unhappiness within, making others unhappy. 
feeling deprived within, exploiting and depriving others. This is the gist of all the problems that we can see. We talk about terrorism, we talk about exploitation, we talk about wars. Ultimately, it boils down to these two basic problems. We are not happy in our mutual relation with the human being or we are not able to fulfill the nature. That's all. And we have to work at the root cause. Just by you know, developing skills and technology, this problem is not going to be solved. So when I'm able to see the importance of all the three, right understanding, relationship and physical facility and that also with correct priority, then I start working for human consciousness. So we are human beings, but it may take time to be human, isn't it? So we are human beings, of course, but to be human, we need to develop this level of consciousness. And this can be the vision of education, this can be the vision of university, this can be the vision of college, this can be the vision of department, that we have to ensure all the three. Starting with the faculty, the management, and then for the students, isn't it? In a department, if you are not able to have good relations with our colleagues, you know, the same thing becomes very clear to the student also and then it starts you know, propagating in the students also. So how can we ensure good relationship inside our department, inside our college, inside our university? How can we develop the understanding of each other? How can we sit together and decide what physical facilities we have to acquire and how much and how we have to acquire? So this could be the vision for the whole university, for the whole college. If you are living with all the three, right understanding relationship and physical facility in the correct priority order, then only we can say that we are living with human consciousness. Human being can be fulfilled, that is, can be happy and prosperous on the basis of these three. But if this is the case, then we can call it animal consciousness. You know, because an animal can be largely fulfilled by physical facility, a human being can never be. Isn't it? So if our living is only for physical facility and then we are living with animal consciousness, animals live only for physical facility and can be fulfilled by that, human being cannot be. So if you are just training our children to earn more and more physical facility, then we are simply developing them like you know, an animal. It, it is said that animals are to be trained, humans are to be educated, isn't it? So just imparting skills is training, but we have to educate the child. And if you look at the vision and mission statements also, never do we say that we are only going to train our students. Isn't it? We are going to educate our students. And education means that we have to work for all the three. So you'll see that animals living with animal consciousness are in harmony. This is fine. So maybe you know, there is one place where you are keeping animals together and the barbed wire is there and they are provided food and water. They are fine. <laughs> they are very comfortable. Right? Human beings living with human consciousness are again in harmony. This is fine. But human being living with animal consciousness, then we are in disharmony. This is not fine. Is that true? Any comment or any sharing on this? So in the society, we can observe two categories of human beings. One category is of those who are lacking physical facility and they feel unhappy and deprived. Another category is those who are having physical facility but still unhappy and deprived. Isn't it? Third 
Yeah. Let me address that also. So there also you can see that at least people are having physical facility. You know? According to us, they are lacking physical facility, but they might have adequate physical facility. So we are trying to decide the limit by our own perception, which might not be required also. What we really want to be is having physical facility and happy and prosperous, isn't it? So maybe somebody has very less physical facility, but he's still taking food for the body, you know, using clothes for the body, isn't it? What about the limit? So there is no, nobody who is not having physical facility. Some physical facility is there. The limit you know, that he has set would be different. That is fine. But as a human being, if you can see, we want to have physical facility, but at the same time, we want to be happy and prosperous. Just having physical facility is not the goal. Now the present education, if you see, at the most it can bring our children from one to two. And that also not for all. Isn't it? Now find out where we are now, at one, two or three, and where do we want to be? Where we are now and where do we want to be? <laughs> In fact, I was taking this session for one batch of Kanpu University sometime long back, 20 years back. And then it was only one session of two or three hours. And after a few years, maybe 10 or 12 years, I was coming from Delhi to Kanpur. I boarded a bus and then one person came to me and he sat by me and said that, did you recognize me? I said, no. He said, I was there as a student in that university and you had taken that session. And after the session, I had decided that I do not have to be two. <laughs> you know? So we call the first one as SBD square. Suvidha Vihin Dukhi Daridra. In Hindi, it is called as Suvidha Vihin Dukhi Daridra. You know? The second one is Suvidha Sampan Dukhi Daridra. So we term it as S square D square. So he said that I had made up my mind that I will not be S square D square ever in my life. When I married, I told my spouse that together we do not have to be S square D square. <laughs> we have to work for happiness, we have to work for prosperity, not only for physical facility. So when we start discussing with the students, no, they take it very seriously. And they come up with their own issues. Isn't it? And when we are able to address those issues as a relative, not as a kind of you know, uh, senior faculty dictating something to the child, as a relative, I am related to you. They start uh, sharing their feelings, they start coming up with their own aspirations, and they also start understanding. When we set question papers also, no, it's not that you have to just write whatever has been taught. There are some questions we have to explore also. Like this time when I set the question paper for the end semester examination, I gave them one question that, uh, there are, is a family in which a mother and daughter are there and the daughter is using mobile too much and the mother is perturbed <laughs> and she is scolding the child every day and the daughter is now in opposition with the mother. How will you resolve the situation? <laughs> so these kinds of questions can also be asked in the examination, which, <laughs> sorry, saying separate them. <laughs> this has become a common scenario in the families. Parents are perturbed looking at their children, all the time they are using mobile and there is so much of personal space also available, the parents are not aware what it is leading to, isn't it? I, when I go to Lucknow, I reside with a friend uh, and in his family there is one daughter who is preparing for this uh, medical examination. So all the time she is on mobile and her mother is so perturbed that what she did she used to use the mobile and lock the room from inside. She broke the latch also, that next time she's not going to latch her from <laughs> inside. <laughs> this kind of problem is there, isn't it? What is the studying mobile only, sir? <laughs> Why you are separating the mobile? <laughs> no, fine, there has to be a right utilization of mobile. We see our students, most of the students study only in mobiles. No textbook nowadays. See, that is one good thing also, that they don't have to carry books. We also, like we just carried something in the pen drive when we are here. But at the same time, there has to be right understanding of the use of mobile. 
Otherwise, it could be misleading. The child might be doing something at one's own end, and that may land up the child in the problems. That is also happening. If you can just see, like, you can see the kinds of crimes that are taking place. There are some dating sites. The children are dating without any information to the parents, and then they suddenly decide to live in with the other person, and then there is a crime. So much of murder is taking place like that, isn't it? So these kinds of problems are there. So when we are delivering this content to the students, we can ask these kinds of pertinent issues also and let them explore. So you'll see that this whole course is a process of self-exploration. I am also exploring, you are also exploring, and we are co-explorers. So that kind of conducive atmosphere gradually develops in the classroom also, in the family also. And in that atmosphere, the understanding starts. So if you see, we really want to be at three. <coughs> But sometimes we are at one, sometimes we are at two. And the present education can at the most bring the child from one to two, but not to three. So this is the common denominator, unhappy and deprived. Now if you look at the resources, they are in plenty. This is the data from UNO. Of the 4.2 billion tons of food produced, more than 1 billion tons of food is lost or wasted every year. This is a UN-backed report in 2011. About a third of all the food produced for human consumption each year, or roughly 1.3 billion tons, is lost or wasted, according to a new study commissioned by you know, United Nations, FAO. So you'll see that the global food production is six times the requirement. So there is no dearth of food today on the planet. And this is UN-backed data. Now this is for the whole you know, planet. If you look at the country also, if you try to find out the data, the food production, the grain production in our country is twice that of requirement. In 2012 or 13, we collected some data. At that time, the population of our country was 113 crores, 113 crores. And the food production was 227 crore quintals, the grains. Now you double 113, that is 226. So more than two times we are producing in terms of food grains. But still people are dying of hunger. If you look at vegetables, if you look at clothes also, even today if you see... So you have six times the government. Yeah. Wastage is one third. So one third means six multiplied by one third, it is two times, already two times the government. Still you, uh, you start for the... Yeah, because there is hoarding. <laughs> so much of hoarding. You see in our country also, in the grain store houses, the grain should be uh, put in the open, not just before the rainy season starts saying that this is no of no use. The Supreme Court has been telling every year that why don't you feed to the poor? But that is not fed to the poor, that will be simply left open in the you know, rains, and then that will get spoiled, and then this will be used for making liquor. So, so much of misuse is there. So the global food production is six times the requirement. The global food wastage is one third of production. And the wastage is enough to feed 1300 crore people. That time, if you see, the population might be on the planet of 650 million or something. So it was twice the you know, requirement of food on the planet that was being wasted away. It is said that in US, the amount of grain that people feed to the pigs is more than what India and China can consume together. <laughs> now this is kind of hidden wastage. You are not able to make out. If the same corn and grain is eaten by the humankind, isn't it? Then that kind of you know, need would not be there. The food is enough. But if you feed to the pig and then you eat the pig, it is said that if you feed 13 kg of grains to the pig, then you get 1 kg of flesh. That is eaten by one person. Otherwise, 13 people would have you know, filled their stomach. So if you look at the complete cycle, that kind of wastage is there which is hidden. That's how so much of wastage is there. Now, so the questionable thing is, have you understood right utilization? Is it a question of production? Is it a question of production? No. Already there is so much being produced. Is it a question of distribution? Yes. So, is it a question of relationship? Yes. 
So of course, distribution is related to relationship. If I feel related, I'll distribute in place of holding or you know, wasting. So it is certainly a question of right understanding and question of education. That kind of mindset of distributing, sharing is not getting developed in the children. What is coming up is hoarding, isn't it? So transformation that is required essentially is to move from here to here. The transformation is not merely adding more and more to physical facility. Of course, we'll produce what we don't have, isn't it? So physical facilities are of use for sure, isn't it? But just adding the physical facility will not ensure harmony in the society, not ensure harmony in the human being. The society or the nation is not going to develop merely by dint of working more and more of physical facility. So is development just increasing physical facility or development is ensuring all the three? What do you think? There is something called GDP, gross domestic product, and, and we evaluate the GDP and the rise in GDP every year. Now there is a book in which a person has commented on GDP and says that if I have a farm behind my house, I grow vegetables and food there, and, uh, grains there and eat it, the GDP of the country doesn't rise. If I cook together in the family, eat together in the family, live happily in the family, the GDP of the country doesn't rise. But if I go to the market to purchase even and everything, the GDP goes up. If my, you know, if the family members say that we don't want to cook, we'll go outside and dine outside, the GDP again goes up. Now when you dine outside, you get so much of diseases. You go to the doctor, the GDP again goes up. The doctor gives you fake medicine and now you go and file a lawsuit, the GDP again goes up. <laughs> So GDP exactly is not the measure of your development. So as we are mentioning in Bhutan, they focused on GNH, Gross National Happiness. So what we are producing is just one part of it, not the complete thing. It's not the complete picture. We have to see how happiness is growing in the you know, nation, in the society, in the village, in the family. In fact, the good thing is that people have started talking about happiness now. They are taking it seriously. Like in MP, the there is a happiness ministry, Anand Mantrale. They have opened a ministry for happiness. In three or four countries, they have opened ministries of happiness. National Prosperity Index, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. And prosperity is not the same as wealth. Yes. Wealth is one important component, but not all. Yeah, it has to include this. So this kind of transformation is required. Then only we can say that we are progressing as a human society. So this transformation is required you know, so that we can move from the smaller domain to the complete domain. So are we making effort for it? And do we need to make effort for it? So, holistic development is transformation to human consciousness and the role of education sanskar is to enable this transformation by ensuring the development of competence to live with human consciousness and with definite human conduct. Then only we can say that the education is meeting its goal. And for this, it has to ensure three things. One, right understanding in every child. Two, the capacity to live in relationship with other human beings. Three, the capacity to identify the need of physical facility, the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required, leading to the feeling of prosperity. So we have to address all the three, starting with one, isn't it? Now if you look at the current scenario, <coughs> you can see that in terms of right understanding, we are not having any course. So systematically, if you see, you are not having any course, not providing that kind of understanding in the child. So that is missing. The capacity to live in relationship also is missing. You 
will see that on one hand you know, education is going on uh, going up on the other hand this tendency for one upmanship you know man money that is also going up i earn i spend who are you to you know talk about it that kind of feeling is gradually coming up in the family even the children are saying now they are earning while learning so they say that i am you know, living my way by my own earning why can you how can you interrupt in this how can you say something about this the capacity to identify the need for physical facility that is also missing that identification of need is missing the willingness to produce by way of labor is also missing in fact a common misnomer is that if i am less educated i will work with, with my hands if i am more educated i will make others work for me <laughs> so that willingness to make my hands dirty hai na is also missing and that leads to domination the right utilization is also missing largely so the core feeling that is generated is to accumulate more and more and to consume more and more rather than to produce what is required and utilize it rightly at triple it we were conducting one session with the final year students and it was placement time so the director asked there that what is your aspiration out of a job so student was saying something or the other one student stood up and he said very clearly i want three things first job satisfaction second maximum pay third if possible no work <laughs> if possible no work that is manipulation so students are trying to skill them selves in those terms that how do i manipulate so that without working also i can get the package yes <laughs> you'll see that presently uh, we have found that in some states there is a lot of craving for government jobs like they would apply for railway jobs and things like that and once they get a job and they have a salary let's say 40000 50000 they will hire somebody for 10000 he will do that job they are getting the salary without doing any job <laughs> and they call it smartness <laughs> for the problems are merely an indication of the lack of effort for holistic development so most of the problem that we see around as are really only the symptoms of human beings not living with human consciousness and the basic effort is required to ensure human consciousness through human education so the way we are discussing here if we try to introduce such course in the curriculum and we discuss the students then the human education can develop human consciousness so initially it has to go in the form of a separate course you know in terms of human values gradually you have to make every course value based one faculty in kanpur was teaching the course on human values and he was also teaching in mba so he had to teach course on economics so in human values course he will say that needs of the body are limited hai na and we'll talk about it while the needs of the self are continuous yes and while teaching economics he had to say that wants are unlimited yes. and resources are limited the student started na yeah, telling the sir say one thing either it is unlimited or limited <laughs> in one course you are saying limited in other course you are saying unlimited you know so what to do so gradually you have to make all the courses value based <laughs> so economics can there be human economics can there be human psychology can there be human sociology there is not so much problem with technical courses but of course with the humanities there is a lot of problem there could be a lot of problem when we are not able to address this particular thing so with the development of human consciousness the child is able to contemplate on human values and then live with human conduct and character so that he can be a pillar of human society and ultimately it will become a part of human tradition generation by generation so now going by that essentially if you see what does right understanding mean we'll talk about it so it means understanding of harmony at the four levels of living 
what are those four levels? At the level of human being, at the level of family, at the level of society, at the level of nature and existence. When this understanding is there, then the values are contemplated and with that we have the guidance, proper guidance of living in harmony. And for that we can learn skills. So values and skills are complementary, but we have to place values properly. That comes at the first priority. Value tells us what to do. The skill tells us how to do. So the goal has to be clear first. For example, one person has a very good luxurious you know, car, very costly car, moving at a speed of 100 miles per hour, let's say. He can drive on the road, but unless he is clear where he has to reach, what will he do? So the skills can provide you a good car, a good road, isn't it? A self-driven car maybe. But the goal has to be clear where you have to reach. And that has to be done through understanding of values. So essentially, this is the whole content of the course and we'll talk briefly about this today after lunch break. So when you talk about right understanding, there are four levels, human being, family, society and nature existence. And this understanding is the core of education. Education essentially means understanding. And when I go to live accordingly, it becomes sanskar, the inculcation part. Here we have training also, you know, we do get trained, but the, at the core is understanding. So ensuring living in harmony at all the four levels. So this is the whole content of the course as well as the program. If you extend this, now this can develop a complete perspective in us. So we are not only talking about one human being, we are talking about the whole humanity. So this right understanding in the self, starting from human being to the entire existence, enables this kind of competence in me that I can live with justice in every relationship, within family, outside family. In fact, with the development of right understanding, the extent of my family also get extended. I do not look at only those four or five people in my in a house as my family. The whole world becomes a family for me. I am able to see the relationship with every human being. So I am able to have that competence so that I can live with relationship, with justice, from family to the world family. And now I become a pillar of undivided society. Similarly, by ensuring harmony in my family order, by fulfilling the needs of the family, and by ensuring prosperity in my family, the right way, I become a pillar of universal human order. Because even when I am consuming something, I am able to look at the whole you know, world. It's not that I have to snatch from the whole world and feed my family, no. That is also my family, this is also my family. And the two are related. Today, if I explore the planet to feed my family, the next day my family is going to be at risk. There is one girl, no, Greta Thunberg. You know, she keeps on raising voices that who authorized you to consume the planet so much that it is not livable for us. The children are asking them that who gave you this authority, this power? You consume so much that you do not have anything left for us. You consume the petroleum, you consume the resources, the minerals, everything. What will you do? What will we do? Isn't it? So this kind of vision can be developed through education. So the key takeaways, if you see, our basic aspiration is the continuity of happiness and prosperity. For fulfillment of our basic aspiration, we need to ensure all the three, right understanding in the self, relationship with human being, and physical facility with the rest of nature, and this is human consciousness. <coughs> Holistic development is transformation to human consciousness at the level of individual, and transformation to humane society at the level of society. The role of education sanskar is to enable us to develop the competence to fulfill our basic aspiration and contribute to holistic development. In other words, the role of education sanskar is a personal transformation by way of ensuring the development of the competence to live with human consciousness and definite human conduct. So this is what we have shared so far. So the proposals are there. Again, I'll say that it's not a question of agreeing or disagreeing. With the question of investigating, exploring. So essentially this process has to be set in and once that sets in, it becomes a kind of
great in us, it kinds of you know, practice in us. We start exploring on every issue in life in place of going by dictums or sermons or preconditioning, we start investigating. So at the level of individual, this is the desired transformation with right understanding and right feeling. We are able to ensure happiness and prosperity in living. And then gradually it becomes societal transformation. And you could also see that if in any college there is one faculty who is able to ensure this kind of transformation in oneself, he becomes a pillar or she becomes a pillar for the entire college or the university. That is also quite visible. There are so many examples now emerging that that is also quite visible. So whatever is be said is a proposal, verify it on your own right. And I think this dialogue has now begun between what we are and what we really want to be and that only has to gradually get enriched. So now we can take reflection if time permits. <laughs> yeah. Take a mic. Here at uh, College of Engineering, India, Anna University, we have a very unique club which is not there anywhere in India in any college. It's called the EQ Club, Emotional Quotient Club. It's an emotional intelligence club where students, around 200 students are members of that club from various branches of engineering. And every week they meet, they bring experts sometimes or they meet and reflect, as you said, on happiness, what gives happiness. Uh, you know, they explore and they create a lot of activities. For most of what you have done, they have created activities, Very fun nice. activities where they learn with the fun activity and other students also come. What we found is because it's a student driven thing rather than teachers imposing these things and it is a part of uh, around 20-25 clubs which are there for dramatics, there is a club for nearly everything. This is very unique club and slowly students are getting interested what is this, what is coming. And we have received alumni funding of about 70-75,000 for running these activities recently. Very so nice, I just sir. wanted to add that, Very nice. you know, all what you were telling. I think you have proposed this as the best practice of Anna yes. University. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay, nice. it's unique. <laughs> yes, very good idea. I'll propose another quotient here. Mm. Like as you have IQ and EQ, there is UQ also. Ah. Understanding quotient. Okay, okay, okay. Good, sir. <laughs> so that could be added upon this, EQ. Yes, yes how much I am able to develop the understanding within me. <laughs> nice, very nice. There are so many good practices taking place in universities and colleges. And in fact, if the universities start also taking these inputs from other universities, that will also add to the development of the society. This, this the students themselves felt, you know, there is some kind of missing gap in their mind or heart or whatever it is that they needed something extra beyond the academics like this. Certainly. So we have uh, some of the leading psychologists also coming and addressing the students. We had a session on sound healing where they use certain frequencies of sound to heal students. So all these kind of, uh, you know, techniques are being experimented by the students themselves. It is run by a biomedical engineering student who is the president. We have it typically like any other club, uh, the EQ club. As you said, the U. Yes. U Q also can be, <laughs> yes, you know, added. added. I'll <laughs> convey a lot of all this to my students. Definitely, yes. sir. So nice. In fact, next time when you have a workshop here, you can invite some students from there also. Oh, yes. They can be a Definitely. part of that workshop. Yes. Yes. Pardon? Rating. See, essentially we aspire for continuity. We can rate ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, when you talk about harmony, at these four levels, you can rate here how much harmony I am able to ensure within me, in my family, in the society. <laughs> this could be one rating criterion. We can develop indices on this basis. Okay. Presently, if you see, globally also we are having one happiness index. But if you look at the criteria there, they are not completely in sync with this. For example, the first criteria is per capita income. Now that has to do with physical facilities. And that's what I mentioned about Bhutan, uh, GDP and all. Yeah, there they have not, uh, they have not put it at the first criterion. Okay. This is one criteria, but not the first criterion. 
so presently we have to you uh, know modify such indices also which are prevalent today anything else any other reflection ji creative leadership uh, from the traditional role to creative role from uh, commander to coach uh, manager to mentor director to delegator and one who uh, demand respect, respect to one who realize the self respect so exceptionally he has told in 2007 i think he has given that ethical values apart from nice. this gdp this gdp i told no is the national prosperity index which, which should include the not only the gdp the human value system and the poverty yes yes we can apply so much of creativity in bringing this into education in bringing this into living like opening such clubs you know having such uh, discussions can be done of course and see presently we assume that our relations with the children is only for four years when they are staying here in the campus no we are related for the whole life so can we also develop some kind of relations with the uh, alumni also we are aware when they get married when they switch on to a new job what is happening in their life is somebody facing in some problem in life that kind of relationship can also be built up and this leadership uh, creative leaders uh, should create uh, yeah. uh, developed indian india so towards that he has pointed out yeah. it is sometimes also felt that many times in the society the back benchers of the classroom are more contributing so can we have <laughs> some program for them they might not be doing good in academics but they are doing well in, in life and society so so much of creativity is there we can apply so much of creativity yes pardon so back benches also co contribute significantly to the development of uh, society in a lighter when i said that uh, back benches can contribute can sponsor uh, while uh, front benches can only contact this type of seminars back benches can sponsor many such types of programs so that's why you are sitting at the back bench <laughs> 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 sir was saying something sir competence competence is okay. the number of suicides taking place in kota it will not get reduced at all so as a teacher it may be one of the roles of every faculty member to create such a okay. feeling yes. we have to bring excellence at the core in place of competition then competition becomes redundant if every student is working by oneself to develop oneself then why should we bring in competition at all but that readiness has to be you know set in sir sir you are talking about uh, harmony in family society but the whole thing is uh, which is the most priority is uh, the family is it harmony in family that will makes uh, going for a society or going for university you know, wherever going uh, harmony with family with a, a human being like so my uh, suggestion is harmony in family which is the base for going for everywhere yeah so harmony in the family is the basis for harmony in the society but how will the harmony in the family get ensured one has to work at the level of individual let's say you are in a family if you start developing yourself with human consciousness then gradually there will be harmony in the family so that's why we are starting with human being but human being essentially is going to live in a family ji yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ma'am wants to say something. Okay. Harmony is equated to happiness. In fact, no, when you observe it, you see that when I'm in harmony, then only I'm happy. So harmony is the same as happiness. So happiness, we cannot uh, rank whether whether I'm happy or unhappy. Or, it's finally ending with the harmony with the uh, people around, with the nature around, and. Uh, with the acceptance we so, cannot we may not be hmm? able to get 
So you can remove the word happiness, just keep harmony. No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> the goal is again met. So we, Essentially, we are aspiring for harmony within. We are, we cannot, and harmony in our relationships. We cannot expect... individual centric. Okay, that's why we defined that happiness is the same as harmony. Otherwise, we feel that by getting sensual pleasures, we are going to be happy. Or by getting some favorable feeling from others, by catching attention of others, we are going to be happy. But that is not happiness essentially. So the happiness is misunderstood. In fact, when you say continuity of happiness, it includes bliss, satisfaction, peace and happiness, all. So we are talking about the state of bliss also, when you are talking about happiness. Sir, uh, I, have a, <laughs> I have a question, sir. Uh, all this is very nice for uh, someone who is matured, most of us. A 17-year-old, 18-year-old who is entering into college, for him physical comforts, body level relationships are very important and hormonal activity is at its peak. So any relationship they base is on, you know, beautiful, physical comforts and all that. How do we go about, you know, one the club and all this is beautiful concepts. I can understand now when I am at 40, 45, all this. But a 17 year old, it's a big challenge. Yeah, in fact, one Biggest whole station challenge. is there, uh -huh. where you talk about the feeling of love. And love is many times misunderstood for infatuation or lust. And the students really uh, discuss their issues yes. when we talk about it. So we discuss that issue also, the issue of love. Love is the feeling of relatedness to all, uh, yes. while it is misunderstood for lust or infatuation, yes. when it is bound to sensual pleasures. Yeah. And the students are in a position to explore. Yes, yes, they, they are, are. Once they yes, realize yes, yes. they are, but uh, to get in into… In Delhi, yes. one girl was cut into 32 pieces with her living partner. <laughs> so they have this kind of news also. If they do not understand at this prime stage of life, they are going to meet this kind of end. Recently in Goa, an incident, mother is uh, Yes, yes. Sir, uh, I felt that uh, students uh, are, when we taking classes, na, we could see the students are understanding better because when the ages increase, the accumulations also increase. The yeah, that is another increase. important factor that so with age, we have more preconditionings. Yeah. The students have less conditioning. Yeah, less conditioning. They are understanding better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So the way he or she has been brought up in the family yes. or the society around, yes. As you pointed out, this education, I feel this education to be given at the younger age. It's, this education to be given at the younger age, though we have been telling, we can understand, but definitely I am telling only youngsters can understand better than the... <laughs> yes, yes. When you, when you talk, yeah. you said we can understand. <laughs> but if this education is given to youngsters, they can understand better than a senior person. But senior person always think as if they know everything by yes, their experience. Yes. So this education is very much required for the youngsters to <laughs> yes. change the society. And each class we can spend 5 to 10 minutes to teach the ethics. No? That way we can, life science we can uh, teach them at the younger age. Certainly. This is very much uh, required to teach at the younger age. After that, uh, we think that we are always correct. But uh, others only should tell that we are whether you are correct or not. Sir, sir over here. Yes. I need a clarification on accumulation of physical facility. So it's something like we can always draw a boundary, right? Like uh, I'm contented, I'm happy with what I am. But then sometimes the circumstances around us push us to a next level of more of accumulation. For example, this hall. When we talk about auditorium, a normal auditorium at the normal stage and the normal provision is sufficient enough. But have we not accumulated more of physical facility to make it more easier for all the participants as well as the resource person? So, in that case, the more and more of level of comfort doesn't give a clear boundary for the accumulation of physical facility. So, how do we define that boundary? Yeah, so there you can see that when I consume physical facilities, I can make out the limit to it by looking at my health. For example, if I'm sitting in the chair all the time, my stomach is going to get upset. So, I have to walk also, I have to work with my muscles also. You know? so, a natural outcome of the understanding of the need for physical facilities is two things. One, I get the 
understanding about prosperity, how much is enough. Secondly, I am able to ensure good health. For example, if I am sitting in AC all the 24 hours, all the 365 days, then I am going to have breathing trouble. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I can make out the need. Secondly, when I prioritize relationship over physical facility, I can see that there are so many people outside who are working in the sun. So am I working something for them also? Or only I am enjoying the physical facility here? So with that feeling of relationship, I try to utilize it for the larger section of society. And uh, this uh, mobile, looking to put mobile and laptop, that is also not, digital reading is not good for our eyes. Now maybe early we are going to get <laughs> problem in our eyes. So the book reading is always good and because we won't blink it seems, the eye get hot and yes, yes, it's yes. not very good. But occasionally we can do, but not normally. So the mobile is of course of use, <laughs> but we have to make out the right utilization of the mobile. Mm, Otherwise yes. it is going to get misused. Yes. So is it meant for education or entertainment or something else? Now let us find out. And then through this exploration, the child is able to make out the purpose of physical facility. If you look at it closely, there are only three purposes of physical facility. One, nurturing the body. Second, protecting the body. And thirdly, rightly utilizing the body. Anything sir, else is unnecessary. Sir, I feel, uh, sir, once this practice is given, he has to be given, uh, he, once he understands harmony, he has to practice it every day. That feedback mechanism should be there, then only it can be put it into force. It is every day you practice yoga like that. This has to be inculcated, just learning alone. Certainly, can't, certainly. In fact, with that motivation also, yes. what we are trying to do, like we are trying to bring one course every semester. So in the first semester, you have induction program. In the second year, you, know, you have this UHP2 course. From the third year itself, the minor degree courses are there, electives are there, and we can include certain more inputs like a daily practice. For example, where there are hostels, we are having programs in the hostels in the evening or the morning. Health programs can be there in the morning. In the evening, we can have such discussion. Like there is one college, uh, Dr. R.K. Agrawal would be speaking about it today. There is one A.K. Gar College in Gaziabad. So we have one resource person, Mr. Gopal Babu. He uh, joined there. And what he did, uh, like after joining, he started conducting sessions in the evening for the hostel inmates every week. And through that, every child, every student had to go through that evening session. That was made a mandate. And through that, we can see the feedback that we got from the alumni recently, three months back, was quite enriching. The companies which are hiring them, they are able to see the vision in them. They are not so short-sighted that just for getting small perks, they will hop a job. They will switch to a new job. That kind of attitude is not there. Their retention is better. Their efficiency and productivity is better. Their group work is also better. So that kind of thing is visible. So of course, we need to include some inputs every semester. Even in the hostels, if you can have some program, that would be very good, very beneficial. I mean to say it's a continuous learning, sir, and imp yes, yes, yes. implementing it. That would be the best option. Yes. And presently, if you see, like we are having one morning session, so all those faculty who have gone through a workshop, they join together in the morning session. So 5.30 to 6.30, we have morning session in English, 6.30 to 7.30, we have in Hindi. So the faculty would be joined together and they will be sharing their common problems in the family. Like use of mobile by the child could be there, relation with the spouse would be there, job insecurity could be there, all those things which can occur to them. Or some old memories which are harping inside, now coming to the fore. So they also discuss. So through that, no, a very kind of cohesive exploration is continuing. Yeah. So we can have these programs in the university campus also for all the you know, students and teachers. <laughs> Quite possible. Yeah. I think it is time now. We'll keep on sharing and discussing. So let us go for lunch. After you start working in your day-to-day -day life, routine life, this everything will evaporate. So many times we try to motivate our PhD scholar after they go back to their college, then immediately everything they will forget. So what is required that a sustained effort, at least as per scientifically, if we continue any process at least for some 40 to 50 days, because 40 to 50 days every cell is uh, being uh, replenished. So only if you continue this process and hearing this 45 days minimum, then that will become part of you. Then uh, you can continue. Pardon, huh? 60 weeks. 
Okay, so what I request, you should continue listening this kind of, otherwise once in, before you forget every next week you start listening that. That is the practice record, otherwise that will not sustain in your mind and uh, you will not appreciate the benefit of this. The definitely there is a good benefit, that benefit if you want to enjoy, you should continue practice that. So that practice is, that is what I told you, that practice is possible at the younger age. That uh, I say, after you come at uh, 50, that practice is very difficult because our mind is uh, poisoned with a lot of uh, yeah, uh, negative things. So at the young age, it is not poisoned till now, so we can make them uh, uh, to sustain towards that path. So for senior people to adopt this, it is very, very difficult. So we need to practice more than 48 days or uh, whatever it is. In all religions also, if you see, there are many practices being followed for 41 days. This is to make sustenance of that, uh, that effect. So I request, uh, as you pointed out, a continuous effort is required. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. After practicing only we should teach. No, what what happened now? If you start preaching without practice, ill effect will be very high. That uh, if you start, yeah, this is also you will experience. If you practice, without practicing, if you just practice, if you preach, then you will experience a lot of ill effect because of that. Because your mind will... Okay, you will know that lot of uh, bad thing you are doing. <laughs> yes, yes. That is also you will experience if you preach without practice. Because you understood what is good, but you are doing wrong thing, then it will, the, our system itself will not... Uh, yes, will not uh, sir, one thing I want to add, sir. It, sir, I want to add one thing from your point. It is not the age they say, sir. It is only the sankalp we make. Suppose we make it, we can do it, they are telling, sir. I learned recently Bhagavad Gita. So some days I really had challenge of not to attend it. But it is again, I have to see the ways like that they were telling to me, sir. So and it has to be lifelong, they were telling. And we have to go and attend that place, see to that we are in, the, in that flow of uh, process. So it is not like age, sir. Younger age, I do agree that is Ayindal Veliyadu, Ayindal Veliyadu, sir. But suppose we have an attitude, we can do it, sir. That is the point I just wanted to add, sir. So thank you all. I request the pa audience to kindly stay back for the photo session. We'll take a couple of photos and leave for the lunch break. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to get comfortable so that we can continue with our session. Please. So before the lunch break, we are talking about the basic human aspiration and the fulfillment. And we were talking about this kind of transformation that is required for every student. Yeah, I think we can settle now. And we can also keep our mobile phones inside. <laughs> that will take a lot of time. <laughs> so. You could see that human consciousness means ensuring right understanding, relationship and physical facility, all the three with the correct priority. You know? And this kind of transformation is required. Presently, when we are not aware about the need for right understanding, need for relationship, and we are only aspiring for physical facilities without ever being clear of the amount of facilities that we require, you know? and we keep on ignoring relationship and right understanding, we are here in this kind of state that can be called as animal consciousness. Isn't it? Because it could be largely adequate for animals, but not for human beings for sure. 
and in education we need to have this kind of vision to develop all the three right understanding in every self relationship between every two individuals and fulfillment of physical facilities with the rest of nature then only we can ensure mutual happiness and mutual prosperity so are you able to see this if you have any question or any sharing regarding the exploration that we had in the past one hour if you have any reflection you can share is this fine yes so this is the basic role of education in human life so we'll explore into the effort required for this this kind of transformation for holistic development so as we stated earlier that whatever is being stated here is a proposal no need to assume it as true or false and, and what is basically expected is to verify it verify the proposal validate in one's living then only we are able to explore the proposal isn't it so one essential part in this whole workshop or the course is to get to know the proposal so listening to the proposal there are two words listening and hearing what is desirable listening hearing me the words are falling on ears but unless we are paying attention we are not listening so first of all we have to grasp the proposal that is being said we are using the same words but the meanings might change for the happiness now if i ask you can happiness be the same for every human being what will you say no does everybody aspire to be in harmony what do you think everybody is aspiring anybody here who is aspiring for disharmony so if you look at this if happiness is equated to harmony happiness is the same for all everybody becomes happy by living in harmony nobody becomes happy by living in disharmony so if i use the same word happiness now and i ask can happiness be the same for all then what will you say yes <laughs> so the same word but the meaning has changed that's how this listening to the proposal is very much required so the same word of happiness now has a different meaning isn't it we might be carrying multiple notions inside us for the word happiness but if i am able to see very clearly that happiness is to be in harmony i can see that for every human being on this planet the same definition of happiness applies in fact presently if you see a big dichotomy is there that if you look at certain videos also which have been made regarding the various notions of happiness and prosperity still people are not clear what happiness is through civilizations if you study people have been aspiring for happiness in multiple ways without being clear what happiness essentially is isn't it and if the goal is not clear how will i achieve it and if in different sects in different uh, kind of groups we carry carry different kinds of notions for happiness notions of harmony you know then ultimately we are not going to be in harmony so that's how this kind of exploration is required so that we can listen to the meaning of the word you know and then get to know so once you listen to the proposal then one essential task is to refer to one's natural acceptance now when i am listening to the proposal also i can simply taste the proposal that yes proposal sounds good i can go further and analyze the proposal if he is saying this then it might imply this also it might imply this also when we are you know analyzing we might also be comparing the proposal with various thoughts various ideas that we might be carrying within and all of us has have ideas notions about happiness prosperity peace education isn't it development we might be carrying multiple options so we keep on comparing the proposals also among various options so that is another task that we can do we can also go and further image the proposal image the life with this kind of proposal if this is it if this is being in happiness if this is being harmony then what is my life going to be how will my family be now if i live accordingly how will my profession be now if i live accordingly that is some higher level task that we can do so we can taste the proposal we can analyze and compare the proposal we can also image our life with the proposal but that is not all what is essentially required is to verify the proposal at one's own natural acceptance is this what i really want to be so mostly you know what we try to do by listening to the proposal we analyze the proposal at the most we seldom go to even image our life with the proposal even though we are doing that we seldom go to verify the proposal 
but unless I verify, it never becomes a part of my understanding. Do I really want to be this or this? We will see, one example we will take while discussing the feeling of trust. How do I really make out my natural acceptance? Can I verify at the level of my natural acceptance? Can the natural acceptance be the same for all? Isn't it? And the third thing is to live accordingly. Whether I am carrying it only at the level of thought or it is there in my living also. So for example, we may talk about relationship, the teacher may talk about relationship, okay? And the students are able to see that this teacher was fighting with another teacher yesterday. I could see in the corridor. And when you go to deliver the talk in the classroom about relationship, the students have this kind of question in mind that why were you fighting with the other person when you were talking about relationship? So I have to live accordingly. And the assurance for any proposal comes when you are able to live accordingly. Otherwise, it only appears as a theory, as a dogma, as a, an idea. Unless I live accordingly and I validate in my living, it does not become a part of my understanding. So, when I go to live accordingly, I behave with human beings. I interact with human beings. Now, whether the way I behave is fulfilling to the other or not. For example, somebody did a mistake. I start shouting on the other. I get irritated, angry. I start dominating. Then the other person is able to see that, yes, I was wrong, but you are also wrong. You should not be dominating over me like this, or you should not be shouting like this. So even though the other is accepting one's mistake, but the other is able to see that you are not accepting your mistake while you are shouting at me, then mutual happiness will not result. So when I am living accordingly, right, I am behaving with the other person, and then it ensures mutual happiness. It gets certified to me also, that yes, this is it. If I live accordingly, it is going to ensure mutual fulfillment in my relationships with my spouse, with my child, with my students, with my colleagues, with my subordinates, with my superiors, with a person in the market. So this is an essential component. And the second thing is when I interact with the rest of nature, does it ensure mutual prosperity? The way I fulfill my need, for example, I am taking food, but the way I am producing food, it is spoiling the soil. Isn't it? Maybe I am going on raising production by doing some genetic you know, modification in the crop that is spoiling the soil culture or I am utilizing, using so much of urea, insecticide and pesticide that is spoiling the soil. So something is wrong with my notion, my idea, isn't it? So it has to be mutually fulfilling for the rest of nature also. You will see that there is one train that goes from Punjab to Rajasthan. And that train is called as cancer train. It so happens that there are so many patients in Punjab today of suffering from cancer. So at one point of time, after Green Revolution, we started using so much of insecticide, pesticide and urea in one part of the Punjab that after the practice started, almost in every family, if you look at three generations, at least one person is suffering from cancer. It means I have not lived the right way. While growing physical facilities for me, I have spoiled the nature and that's how I am suffering. Isn't it? And we will also see there is a vast patch of land there which has lost the fertility. So the government is removing the topsoil from that area and bringing topsoil from some other region. So it has to be mutually fulfilling for the rest of nature also. Particularly when we are teaching technologies, we have to see whether technology is going to be sustainable, whether using recycling, whether you are using cyclic ability in the process which are involved, isn't it? All those things have to be taken care of. So when I listen to a proposal, I verify within and I live accordingly. If it fulfills on both the counts, it is acceptable to me within. Yes, naturally I accept this. And I also am able to live, able to live accordingly. Right? It is fulfilling for me as well as the other. Then I settle with that. Okay, yes, this is it. This is what I really want to be. This is the right understanding. So that gradually starts in me and I start understanding the reality. And I start understanding myself, my relationship, the rest of nature, what a bird is, what an animal is, what a soil is, what water is. And ultimately we are in problem because we are not clear about the reality. That's how we carry notions in us. And going by notions is not fulfilling. 
unless I understand the reality as it is, it is not fulfilling for me. So this is the whole process. So which process is naturally acceptable to you? A process of self-exploration, self-verification on your own right, leading to understanding in yourself, or a process of do's and don'ts in which you assume what is said without verification? Which process is good or okay? First one. If we just put up a set of do's and don'ts or share some moral stories, right, it will not work. Maybe you recite some story to the student, but that story belongs to some time, 3000, 2000 years old period, and the child is not able to relate to it. Or there are some mixed notions in that story which I am not able to verify. Or I might have questions regarding that story, but I am not able to ask. Then I will never live accordingly. I will carry my own notions. Okay, so long as this course is going on, listen to them. <laughs> Rest is my life. You know? <laughs> There's a song, no, it's my life. You know? <laughs> so the students are going by that. It's my life. I'll go my own way. Right? Nobody is there to teach me or train me. So we need to explore. And essentially, if you look at this whole program, it is a process of self-exploration within oneself. I start asking questions to myself, I start looking into my innate natural acceptance, I start responding to myself. And in that whole process, I am able to evaluate my preconditionings, my dogmas, my beliefs, and I become more and more clear about the reality in and around. And I feel happy within, being with myself. I am clear, I am resolved. So we can look at this. Now, as I was mentioning, so verifying happens. Yes, any question regarding this? Any query? Any, you know, any issue regarding this? Fine. Nice. I think we can keep our mobile phones, you know, in the pockets. <laughs> the listening is not taking place otherwise. Only hearing is taking place. <laughs> Now, if you look at happiness, you'll see that the state or situation in which I live, if there's harmony in it, if there's synergy in it, I naturally accept to be in that situation. And I want to continue in that situation. So, for example, in a family, if you see, there are four members in a family, and there's harmony in the family. Okay, we feel happy being in a family. But if all the time some tussle is going on, debates and you know, quarrels are going on, we would like to come out of that. So I naturally accept to be in that situation in which there is harmony. If that kind of situation is not there, I want to come out of that. Similarly, if I look within me, in my thoughts, if there is harmony, I can be at peace with me. Otherwise, I have to switch on the TV, I have to look at the mobile, I have to talk to somebody to keep myself at peace. <laughs> Isn't it? So in my thoughts also, I want to have harmony every moment. Is that true? We just try to see, maybe tomorrow is Sunday, and tomorrow there is no other person in the family. You are at home, there is plenty of time. You just put away your mobile, your TV, your newspaper, your books, and be with yourself for a whole day. What will happen by evening? <laughs> if you get good sleep, that is also good. <laughs> Just try to see whether we feel comfortable being with ourselves. You will see that so many thoughts, a traffic of thoughts start appearing. All those old tussles start <laughs> appearing again. Why is that so? Because essentially we are not in harmony within. If that harmony is there within me, I would like to continue with that. And that's how now we'll switch on the mobile, we'll switch on the television, try to look something outside so that I can be at peace with me. And you can see the whole life we are doing this. We are trying to escape from unhappiness within. In place of ensuring happiness within, we are trying to escape from unhappiness within. Is that true? <laughs> Look at that. And then we are blaming others for unhappiness. 
दिस पर्सन इज अ हेल्प है ना दिस पर्सन हैज मेड माई लाइफ हेल्प वाइल द हेल्प इज देयर इन साइड इज एंड टेड सो एसेंशियली टू बी इन स्टेट ऑफ हार्मनी ऑफ सीनर्जी इज हैप्पीनेस हैप्पीनेस इज टू बी इन हार्मनी ऑन द अदर हैंड वट एवर बी द स्टेट ऑफ सिचुएशन इन विच आई लिव इफ दर इज डिजहार्मनी और कॉन्ट्राडिक्शन इन इट देन इट इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल टू बी नेचुरली to continue in that state of situation and i want to come out of that but still if i am forced to be in that state of disharmony or contradiction it is unhappiness so if there is harmony in the department when you come to the office you feel happy being there in the department but if there is no harmony in the department you know you wait for 5 o'clock you know so that you can leave the department as soon as possible <laughs> isn't it so happiness is to be in harmony unhappiness to is to be in disharmony any reflection on this is this fine any reflection volunteers can also reflect you know okay <laughs> think over this in fact it does take some time you know for us to reflect on this and that's how we invite for a full workshop because this is just an introduction that is being to be forced to in be in contradiction <laughs> you'll see that most of the time the quarrels in the family take place on sunday mornings <laughs> when you cannot come out of the house you know <laughs> because you have to be there the other is also there you know and you have to spend the whole day there is no escape route so <laughs> naturally the problem starts surfacing now another thing that we can uh, explore about is prosperity so what is prosperity when do i feel prosperous when do i feel prosperous when i feel that i have enough hai na i am more than what i require i have sufficient so the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility is prosperity now there are two things here one is the required physical facility and the second thing is having or producing more now which one is basic when do i feel more or when do i feel prosperous when i have more or when i am able to make out the required physical facility first so when i am able to make out the requirement then only i can have the feeling of having more otherwise how can we have this feeling isn't it but the problem is that we are not able to make out the requirement of physical facility so that's how we are not able to have that feeling of having more now let's say you know you have an income of 50000 rupees and then you have some you have set some requirement and you feel that okay once i have this much of salary that will be fulfilled now after 5 years you have 1 lakh salary do you feel that you have enough <laughs> then you have another set of requirements you start thinking about 100 other things and that's how since we are not able to make out the requirement correctly we never have the feeling of having more so whatever be the availability of physical facilities we feel deprived we feel that we have less so prosperity and possession of wealth are two different things i might be possessing a lot of wealth but still i might not feel prosperous i was just going through one uh, report about a recent startup on educational technology and this person had been growing his business for the past 5 years 
but he is completely in a mess now because he did not have that feeling of having more. He went on expanding the business without ever being clear how much he can do and how much is required for him. And you can look at all the startups. Our students are going for a startup. That is a very good thing to see. But since they do not have the clarity about prosperity and they do not have the clarity about relationship, they are not able to keep the team together. They are not able to make right utilization of the resources. And very soon they are getting bankrupt. So our students do not have that understanding of prosperity so that they can make out the need for physical facility rightly. So find it out. In fact, we are having one uh, session with university students of Kanpur some time back. And it was tea break time. We were taking tea together. So it was asked to the students that in how, with how much tea will this cup get filled? So students look at the cup and then one student said that, OK, 350 ml would be enough. In 350 ml, this cup can get filled. Then we said, that, OK, very good. Now, when this cup does not have a bottom, how much tea would be required? They started laughing that, how can there be a cup without a bottom? He said that a similar thing holds true for human being. If you are not able to you know, make out the need for physical facility, you are like a bottomless cup. You keep on pouring <laughs> and it keeps on flowing. <laughs> We are not able to see that this is not enough. It so happened that in 2000, and after 2000, these BCMCA courses came up, and in a large number of students were graduating, and then the faculty, uh, these uh, companies were also hiring them you know, for computer related jobs, and they were getting good package. So if you look at the package that went up, that suddenly shot up in 2004, 2005, and the students in the metro cities, they got a very good package, Based on that package, they started living that kind of lifestyle. It is also said, somebody from Hyderabad was telling me that these young professionals, they would go to a mall, purchase some garment, put on for five to six times, and then simply throw it away. They will not even go for washing them. So that kind of lifestyle they adopted. They married also, showing that kind of lifestyle. The spouse also came with this kind of you know, vision that, yes, now I'm going to have a very luxurious life. And in 2008, there was severe recession in the country. You might be aware. 2008 to 2010, it continued. And most of them lost their jobs. And they were in a huge crisis. They had taken huge loans for car, for houses, right? And that was not being paid, so the banks took them away. Many of them got into depression. Some committed suicide. There were also cases of multiple divorces because the spouse and I had an idea that I will be leading this kind of life, and that was suddenly lost. So we might have possession of wealth, but unless we have the clarity of the need for physical facility, isn't it? That feeling of prosperity will not be there. So there are two essential components here. One is the need assessment of the physical facility, the requirement of physical facility. And the second is availability or production of more than what is required. We'll see how to make out the need for physical facility. So the mark of prosperity is that if I feel prosperous, I think of right utilization. I think of nurturing others. So if you see that you have more than required, what will you do? You will share with your extended family, with the society. You will share, naturally share. What will you do with the you know, rest of the things? But if you feel deprived, you will not share. Rather, you will try to exploit. Now, if you go by this, you can see that somebody might be a billionaire. But if he's still exploiting the society, is he feeling prosperous within or not? Not. Somebody might be earning only thousands you know, of rupees, but is still sharing with the others, then he's feeling prosperous. So prosperity and possession of wealth are two completely different things. When I feel prosperous, I think of right utilization. I think of nurturing others. If I feel deprived, I feel like accumulating more and more. I feel like exploiting others. And ultimately, your happiness is connected to prosperity, not wealth. If I feel that I have more than required, I will feel satisfied in terms of physical facilities. If I don't feel, I will not feel satisfied in terms of physical facilities. So to understand prosperity, we'll 
talk about human being. So we all are human beings, so we have to talk about ourselves. You know? And something that we can always observe is ourselves. So it is the simplest thing to do, but becomes the most difficult thing to do. Because our priority might not be to observe ourselves. So, when we are explore ourselves, we see that there are two kinds of realities. One is the self and the other is body. So, for example, when I ask you who wants to be happy or do you want to be happy, you say yes, I want to be happy. That I is a reality, the self. And there is also a body. We took lunch that went into the body, isn't it? So when you talk about human being, there are two distinct realities to be understood. One is the self and the other is the body. Now to how to understand it, the self and the body clearly. So if you look at the need, you can see that the need of the self is happiness. For example, trust, respect, you know, feeling of relationship, this all gives me happiness. When you look at the body, the need of the body is physical facility, like food, clothes, shelter. Now when I look at my need, I can see that my need is continuous. I want to be happy every moment. I want to have the feeling of respect every moment, isn't it? But how about the body? For example, we had lunch, isn't it? You took food, after some time you feel that this is enough. Somebody comes to you and says that, no, no, in my name, na, you take one cup of rice more. <laughs> now that is going to be a trouble because our need for food is limited. Beyond that we cannot take, isn't it? In the north there is cold, so we have to put on three or four layers of clothes. Here it is not so cold, so only one or two layers can do, isn't it? So the need for clothes is also limited. The need for house is also limited. Whatever physical facility we require, you see that this is required a limited quantity and it is temporary. We require from time to time. So like food, we want to have three times in a day. Isn't that's all. How about the feeling of respect? Only three times in a day? Before breakfast, after breakfast, no respect? <laughs> we want to have respect, isn't it? In the early morning, we served manlije breakfast and the plate was pushed to you. Hana? Go, eat and go. <laughs> In a disrespectful manner. That will not do, isn't it? So, I want to have the feeling of respect in continuity, but I do not want to have food in continuity. Isn't it? And you see that this is a feeling, this cannot be quantified. You cannot say that one meter of respect or two meter of respect, one kg of trust or two kg of trust, this sounds meaningless, isn't it? But we can always quantify the physical facility. How much food I require, how many clothes I require, you know, it can always be quantified. So this is quantitative, this is qualitative. You will also see that the need of the body can be fulfilled by physiochemical things. Like this house is made out of physiochemical things. The brick and mortar, they are all physiochemical. The clothes that we wear is made of physiochemical. The food is physiochemical. The gadget, the projector, the, all these things are physiochemical. But my need is not fulfilled by physiochemical things. My need is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling. So when you go for physical facility also, we can be very clear that this physical facility is meant for my body. And I am in, I am there with my body, so I am fulfilling this need. My need is essentially happiness and that is fulfilled only by right understanding, right feeling. Now I can make out the two sets of needs very clearly. Now one reflection here could be, if my need is fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling and not by physiochemical things. So when I go to fulfill my need by physiochemical things, it appears to be unlimited because my need for and a relationship is continuous. My need for happiness is continuous. For example, I want to have respect in continuity. 
if I assume that respect is going to be ensured by clothes, for example, right? How many pairs of clothes will I require then? For example, you go to a party, okay, and you put on some cloth, and it is a very exotic kind of very, you know, very costly clothes. And just look at the reflection that you are getting. Out of that cloth, are you really getting respect or something else? Respect or envy? <laughs> Looking at the same kind of cloth, somebody may come and appreciate. Somebody may say that must be getting black money. You know? <laughs> From where did he purchase this kind of cloth? Or this kind of ornament? You know? He, she or he or you know, their spouse must be doing something wrong. You know? So one person might be get, you know, paying attention to your clothes. Somebody might be criticizing. Somebody may simply come and put a grimace over this. You know, what kind of, see this is a simple occasion. What was the need for putting on this kind of cloth? It is not definite whether you will get respect out of cloth or not. But when I try to derive respect out of cloth and that respect, the need for respect is in continuity. So I may assume that every time I have to put on a new cloth or I have to get a costlier garment. And then the need for cloth appears to be unlimited. And there also, if you see like somebody comes and appreciates you, you are looking very good in this garment, very nice. Can he keep on saying for you know, half an hour like this? <laughs> he cannot say like this. <laughs> so it can never be continuous. So we have to be very clear that my need is continuous. The need of the body is not continuous. And something that can serve the need of the body cannot serve my need. The problem arises when I mix the two. When I try to fetch happiness through physical facility or I try to fetch happiness, respect, out of physical facility, then the need for physical facility appears to be unlimited. Otherwise, it is very much limited. We can easily quantify how much food I require, how many clothes I require. For example, in India, we have three major seasons, you know, winter, uh, this rainy season and this summer season. Now, if you try to quantify in one season, maybe I require five pairs of clothes. Altogether, 15 pairs of clothes would be enough. Isn't it? Can we make it out? See, this much, you know, if I can make out, I can very much easily see that the need for physical facility is limited, whatever facility you talk about. For example, if there is a car and the car can accommodate four people, having one car in the house can be enough, isn't it? And if the purpose of the car is to transport yourself, not to get respect, a simple model car can do. But if I feel that, no, this, my neighbor has a very luxurious car, a long, shining, red color, you know, <laughs> German model car, and I should also be having the same, then my need for money appears to be more and more. Because what I am trying to do now, I am trying to get respect out of that car. And that is a self-defeating process. When you are there with that car, still some person may pay attention to you, some person may ignore you, some person may criticize you. Array, somebody may say that this person is totally into show off, you see. Now the person may criticize you also. So I need to be clear about the two distinct realities, self and body, so that I can make out the need for physical facility rightly. And then only I can feel prosperous. So something that we are talking right now, I can make out the requirement of physical facility only when I am clear about the self and body you know, being two distinct realities. Their needs being different, their activities being different, their being being different. The two are quite two different realities. You know? One cannot fulfill the other. If I try to fulfill my need through physical facilities will not do. If I try to fulfill the need of the body through just feelings, that will also not do. Maybe you went to the market and you met some friend of yours and you met the friend after 10 years, right? And he or she took you to uh, his or her house and gave you very good food to eat. And once you are full, 
the other person tells you that whenever you feel hungry, just come to my house. You can never afford this kind of food by yourself. <laughs> Will you feel happy? You will not feel happy. Even though the food was served, but what was not served is respect. So both types of needs have to be understood clear separately and they have to be fulfilled separately. Now in living, what is the priority? How much time and effort is spent for right understanding and right feeling? How much time and effort is spent for physical facility? So that we can make out. Nice say there is some limitation of time. In fact, we spend two to three sessions discussing you know, about this. We also talk about the self in detail when you come to the full workshop. But we are just having a glimpse of the content. Now, similarly, as we are talking about the feeling of respect, similarly, there is a feeling of trust. So we have we have been talking about relationships since morning. You know. So the relationship is built upon the feeling of trust. The relationship starts with trust. This is the foundational value of trust. So when you say family, it means people living together. And wherever we are together, there is relationship. And you can see that the relationship exists between oneself and the other self. The relationship is not between one body and the other body. It is between oneself and the other self. And there are feelings in relationship, in one self or the other self. Isn't it? And the feeling is there in the body or the self? What do you think? Self. What we are proposing here is that these feelings can be recognized with definiteness. The feelings are definite. I can definitely understand the feelings. So if I try to list out, these are nine feelings like trust, respect, affection, care, guidance, reverence, glory, gratitude, and the feeling of love. The body is just used for expressing the feeling in relationship. If I am able to recognize the feeling rightly and able to fulfill it, evaluate it, it leads to mutual happiness. So for example, I am able to see what trust means and I am able to live accordingly. I am able to convey the feeling of trust to my you know, relative. The other also is able to convey the feeling of trust to me. Then there is mutual happiness in the relationship because this is getting fulfilled. Any time when trust is violated or I feel that you know, I cannot trust the other, then there is no mutual happiness in the relationship. So we'll try to explore the feeling of trust now. Trust is to be assured. Showed of what? How can I trust the other? Can we have trust in continuity for somebody? No. Can we trust everybody? <laughs> so we'll see. Can we be assured about everybody? Can we have assurance in continuity? So where are we uh, going wrong in our relationships? We'll try to make it out. We expect trust from the other. The other is also expecting trust from us. But somewhere it goes wrong. And that's how we are not able to have trust in our mutual relationships. So trust is to have the clarity that the other wants to make me happy and prosperous. So, when I explore, I can see for myself that yes, the other wants to make me happy and prosperous. Isn't it? But again, how to have this clarity? We'll explore this through certain questions. So, we'll explore this in feeling of trust between two individuals. Let's say you are the first individual and you can take somebody, somebody else, maybe a member of your family at the second individuals, and we'll try to ask some simple questions. So, take yourself as the first person and the other as the somebody from your family or a friend as the other person and try to investigate it. So for example, we are evaluating trust between two individuals. So let us ask a few questions. 
Now these questions are related to the natural acceptance. For example, I want to make myself happy. What do you think? True or false? True. I want to make the other happy. Everyone? The other wants to make himself or herself happy. Yes. The other wants to make me happy. <laughs> Pardon? Okay. <laughs> I am saying the person whom, for whom I am thinking right now, for him I am saying yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you think? Can we say this for every other person? Or for the same person, can we say this in continuity every time? Think about it. Pardon? Depends on the situation. Yeah, now we'll say that it depends on the situation. Right? <laughs> if it is favoring me, yes. If it is favoring other, maybe no. <laughs> Pardon? Trust is unconditional. Trust comes as a conditioned like under the situation. Like trust becomes free. Then it is unconditional. I believe if. Uh, it is belief. Initially, I believe in you, sir. Based on your actions, two, three times you fulfill my belief. You are this kind of. Then it converts itself into trust. And I start trusting you. And finally, I have complete faith in you. You can do no wrong. You can always think of my benefit, makes me happy. I think faith is very integral for a relationship. Yeah, we but again, cross those see, steps, we cross yeah. these three, two steps and then only we can reach faith, sir. 100% belief. Yeah, but again it is a belief. Ah, it starts with a belief, becomes a trust. Like uh, our children, initially they don't know us, they start with a belief, we do good to them, we try to make them happy, it becomes a trust. Then they have a stage where they have complete faith in their parents. If this process was right, then the result would automatically be And what happens after faith. their marriage? Even that, sir. No, even that, if it was faith, <laughs> sir, if it was faith, if it was faith, then it will be 100%. It can't, you can't go back on faith. But on a trust or a belief, you but can go back. It may be the case that the child now has faith in the spouse, not in you. Ah, faith cannot be divided, <laughs> sir. Faith can be there in the husband, spouse. <laughs> Parents, sir, just because sir, a girl or a boy gets married doesn't mean that there is no after faith. After marriage, one person is added, sir. Yes, added. Pardon? After marriage, one person is added, sir. Yes. So ah, faith is, uh, yes. again, you have to depend on other person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, just see, if it is conditional or it depends on situations or it depends on the person, then there is no continuity. Isn't it? And when there is no continuity, it does not ensure happiness for me. So again, we have to look into all these questions. Now take the other as anybody, maybe if some unknown person. I want to make myself happy? Yes. Do I want to make the other happy? Yes. Does the other want to become happy? Yes. Does the other want to make me happy? Ask yourself. If it is yes, well and good. Otherwise, what will happen? In general, if you see, we have a question mark here. And this question mark is the basic cause for all problems in relationship. When I assume that the other wants to make me unhappy or I have a doubt on the intention of the other, these all questions pertain to the intention of the other. And this question mark is the doubt. And this doubt you know, is the cause of all problems in relationship. Now when I look at the other set of questions about the ability, so you said that I want to make myself happy. Am I able to make myself always happy? No. So even though my intention is pure, the competence, the ability is lacking. Similarly, I want to make other happy. Am I able to always make the other happy? 
No. My ability is lacking. My intention is pure. Similarly, for the other person, the other wants to be happy every moment, but is not able to ensure happiness for oneself every moment. Why? The ability is lacking. Now here, if the other is not able to make me always happy, why do I doubt the intention of the other? So here if you see, we have so many question marks, double question mark here. <laughs> now if the other is not able to make me happy, why do I doubt the intention of the other? When I am able to not make myself happy, I never doubt my intention. I always say that I want to be happy, but there are reasons for not being happy. When I am not able to make the other happy, I say that yes, I am not able to do, but there are reasons for that. But when the other is not able to make me happy, why don't, we, don't I look into the reasons? Why do I doubt the intention of the other? This is a very simple dichotomy and that is going on in our imagination all the time. Whenever the other is not able to fulfill me, I have doubt on intention of the other. And that small doubt you know, keeps on growing in me and creating multiple thoughts in me. And that doubt leads to irritation, anger, opposition, revenge. What do you think? So most of the time you see that I look at my intention. I want to make myself happy, I want to make the other happy. I am basically a very nice person. When I look at the other, I do not look at the intention of the other. I only look at the lack of competence of the other. This person is always unhappy and always making others unhappy. He is basically a bad person. <laughs> Does it happen? Now this is a common mistake. When I look at myself, I do not look at my lack of competence. When I look at the other, I do not look at the other's intention. I look at my intention and other's lack of competence. And all the time in my thoughts, I am you know, churning this. You just look at your thoughts. We are churning the lack of competence of the other. The other person said this thing to me. You know, the other person did like this to me. The other person you know, disturbed me this way, did so much of wrong to me. This thing, that thing, this thing, that thing, all the time. Uh, so when a Sunday comes and you have to be with yourself, you move out. <laughs> because that lack of fulfillment in the relationship is disturbing you. Now how will it appear in the imagination if you see? Let's say a glass broke. What will I say about the other? The other broke the glass, tore the other. When the same thing happens with me, toot gya. The glass broke accidentally. When you keep the light on and simply lock the house, are, I just forgot. If the other person does the same thing, he's careless. He's careless. And he is creating so much of wastage in the house. So when I look at myself, being assured of my intention. I look at reasons for not being competent. But when I look at the other, doubting the intention, I only look at lack of competence. It may be the case that the other person is doing eight things right, two things wrong. When I look at the other, I remember the two wrong things. I do not remember the eight right things. Maybe the maid comes, cooks every day, for example. Someday she puts too much of oil. Now, this maid does not want to cook well. She wants to spoil our health. This is a very bad maid. But every day she is cooking well. One day if she puts in more oil, she becomes a very bad. The same thing happens with us. Are just a call came, I just forgot. I put the oil twice. <laughs> Does it happen or not? That is the lack of trust in the other. So for me, the glass broke accidentally. If I come late, I got late again. Such a heavy traffic. I don't know why the roads are so you know, uh, thin and so congested, right? For me, there should be a broad highway. You know? 
<laughs> if Dada is late, we simply say that he is a late comer. So even if I make the same mistake 100 times, I never doubt my intention. I say that I make mistakes accidentally and somehow I am special. I feel I am special. Now there is a new trend among the youngsters if you see, you accept me as I am, don't try to change me. <laughs> but you have to change for me. <laughs> see somehow I feel that I am special and I reinforce that I am good, I do not want to make any I do not make any effort to improve my competence. When I look at the other, if the other makes a mistake even once, I doubt his or her intention. He or she makes mistakes intentionally and then I have a feeling of opposition, I get irritated, get angry and I keep on reinforcing this, that the other is bad, cannot improve. In fact, we are conducting one workshop at Kanpur and one lady came in the workshop and uh, when it was sharing session on the 8th day, she had to share her reflection. So she said that now I have come to know the real problem in my family. My husband does not have trust in me. I want to improve him. <laughs> and then she forcibly sent her husband you know, to the workshop, next workshop. This husband came on the fourth day when this issue was discussed. He said, now I am clear about my wife. She does not have trust in me. <laughs> In fact, we have very interesting sharing from the participants regarding feeling of trust. One lady, we are conducting one evening workshop for family members at Kanpur. So one lady uh, was attending it and then it so happened uh, that she was cooking after the workshop was over. We used to have from 6 to 8.30. After 8.30 they went home and then cooked. So she was cooking in the kitchen and she suddenly heard some noise. So she had two kids two sons and they were playing cricket in the drawing room and one person you know, shot a ball and it go, went and just broke the glass pen. So this lady came running to the drawing room and saw that one glass pen is broken. The first thought she had was that let me slap them. <laughs> that was a common scenario you know, earlier. But again she was reminded of intention, competence. You know? <laughs> so she paused. And then she went to the kitchen again, brought one piece of cloth, started collecting the glass pieces. Then the, when she had to move, the elder one said, Marogi nahi, will you not hit us? Then the younger one said, no, nowadays she is attending a workshop. <laughs> so this doubt and intention is a major reason for problems in relationship. Now let us try to investigate our relationships, our problems in relationships. As we were mentioning in the previous session that most of the problems in our families are not due to lack of physical facility. They are owing to the lack of relationship. And the relationship also, this is the major reason. If I am able to see that the other person is not comfortable, that's why he or she is not behaving well with me, then I have pity on the other. I feel that the other is helpless. In that situation, the other person has no solution, so the other person is shouting at me. I am able to see the helplessness of the other with the feeling of trust. Otherwise, I start reacting. I am not able to see the helplessness of the other. I am doubting the intention of the other. And now trying to, you know, uh, this thing, highlight the lack of competence of the other. And then we say certain things which are not there. Maybe one person made a single mistake, I highlight it as 10 mistakes. I in fact you know, exaggerate the problem. Why? Because I have that doubt and intention. That irritation is there in me for the other. That irritation was there in me and gradually built up, built up and become like a kind of you know, big uh, issue in the house. So a common mistake in the relationship is that I evaluate myself on the basis of my intention. I evaluate the other on the basis of their competence and then I doubt their intention. I assume their lack of competence to be their lack of intention and then I feel opposed to the other. I get irritated, get angry and so on. One couple from Pune, news came that one couple from Pune, they went on honeymoon after the marriage. Now, in the flight only, a discussion started that both had gone to convent schools of Pune. Now, whose convent school is better? 
<laughs> and that single issue, you know, became such a big issue because they started blaming each other. And after the honeymoon, when they came back, they filed divorce case. <laughs> now this kind of thing, if you just see. So I may not speak to the other for days together or even break up the relationship and one may have lost good friends like this. When I, when, you know, she called me to her you know, party, I went there. When I called, she did not come. Let us chop off the relationship, no more. You know? <laughs> when she calls, I picked up the call. When I called, she did not pick up the call, block the number. <laughs> if you look at the student, this kind of thing is very much apparent. So doubt and tension is the major reason for problems in relationship. Now just try to reflect upon this. If you have unconditional, continuous trust and intention, that is natural acceptance of the other, and if the other is lacking competence, what will you do? A, B, C, or D? What will you do? <laughs> yeah. So if I have trust and intention, I will respond. Otherwise, I will react. So there could be two approaches to a relationship, response or reaction. When I have trust, I respond. I try to develop the competence in the other. I try to understand the other, the lack of competence of the other, you know, the way I can help the other, because I am able to see the helplessness of the other. Otherwise, I keep on reacting. Now just try to find out how many persons in your family and friends do you have trust and intention, that is the natural acceptance, unconditionally, continuously. <clears throat> Is there anyone on which I have unconditional, continuous trust with whom I never get irritated, never get angry, never get opposed? You'll see that if there's a single person with whom I am having this competence, I can have this competence for every other person. Because I am able to, able to see that relationship from self to self. With every self, the same issue applies, that the intention is pure, competence is lacking. In my family, outside my family. In my department, outside my department. In my university, outside the university. Everywhere, the same thing is there. Only that I am not able to develop this kind of competence in me, so that I can see it clearly. So this is fundamental. Trust and intention is the foundation of relationship and you can get an idea of the state of your understanding about relationship from this exploration. Are we able to sustain our relationships, you know, even if the other is lacking in competence? So when I am able to explore deeply, I can see that this 4A is simply a reflection of 2A. I am saying that I want to make the other happy. You are saying that you want to make the other happy. It naturally means that you want to make me happy. Logically, we can say this very easily. But at the level of feeling, it has to reflect. And when this is the case, then I can see the lack of competence on others either side. So every time I try to become a help to the other, to develop the competence of the other. But first of all, I have to develop my competence. Isn't it? So if I sum it, up, then I'll say that what we discussed right now, human consciousness is to ensure right understanding, relationship and physical facility, that also with the correct priority, what we discussed in the previous session, that there are three basic requirements for us to live a happy life. Right understanding, relationship and physical facility. Working only for physical facility is not enough. It will not do, isn't it? The basic aspiration of myself as well as any other human being is continuity of happiness and prosperity. So behind all our aspirations, the basic aspiration is that we want to have happiness and prosperity in continuity. Our aspiration for career, growth, so on and so forth, these are all basically intended at being happy. And at every phase of my life, I have to keep evaluating whether I am getting happier day by day. In fact, nowadays you will see that when people meet, they try to remember the old childhood date childhood days, that we are, we are so happy living in childhood. It means their happiness is going down. That's why I have to remember my past. If my happiness is going up, why will I remember my past? My happiness is growing day by day, every day. 
happiness is to be in harmony hai na there is something that we reiterated prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facilities and to be clear about the need for physical facility we have to understand the human being when i go to understand the human being i can see that human being is coexistence of self and body need of the self is continuous happiness and the need of the body is physical facility is temporary need for phys uh, physical facility is limited trust is to have the clarity that the other wants to make me happy and prosperous if i am aware of my natural acceptance i have trust and intention i feel then related to the other i accept the relationship if i am unaware of my natural acceptance i have doubt and intention and then doubt or intention is the root cause of problems in relationship you know so trust is the foundation of relationship so this is just an initiation of the self exploration process that we started today but in the workshop then we have ample time to discuss you know to reflect on various case studies take examples share you know discuss all those things so nice this was all from my side thank you acha acha so if any question is there or reflection is there we can take up by looking at the intention of myself and the other i need to have that clarity there are suppose somebody is having doubt on me i am not able to prove myself to them end of the day misery only so how to overcome it i am not able to convince the opponent so, so are you assured of the intention of the other or not huh? are you yourself assured of the intention of the other or not yes i am assured Yeah. Then you are able to see the lack of competence in the other. It's not the issue of his intention. It's the issue of his lack of competence. Then I can mend ways. I can think of multiple ways to develop the competence of the other. Essentially, the problem will get solved in continuity only with right understanding. So I have to make a program for ensuring right understanding in the other. And for that, I have to develop within myself also. I should develop. Yes. The other also has to develop, but I should begin with. is especially in a relationship between a boys and a, in a hierarchical relationship how do we even apply this because it becomes very complicated some people say that it is very easy to apply in the department but not in the family you know <laughs> because in the family relationship are given here you have a choice <laughs> so it so happen that everywhere the same solution is there we have to explore together i have a doubt so basic doubt um can the self and the body be really separated we have to experience everything to the body only isn't it even physical facilities doctors say it is a uh, hormonal reaction certain hormones like dopamine oxytocin all these are released even someone praises me or something like that is once again through the body if there was no body there is no self i think isn't it yeah so i am not saying that you have to explore and you know, with the body or uh, without the body it's just that we have to see the self and body clearly so i am there with the body but we experience that. everything only through the body isn't it sir no not exactly see for example you are happy within or not do you need that to that is nothing but uh, certain chemicals in my body the endocrine glands working and i feel good there's nothing you know just like that somewhere if there's no body i can't really experience anything at all yeah we need some more time to elaborate okay. upon it but yes so it could be the other way round also when i am happy within ah, yes. that kind of secretion will be there in the brain that could be there also yes. it's not that it's always from the body body oh yes if happiness is stated me in me so it is a perception of the situation it is your perception ah that's what my perception not the body's perception not the body's perception yes ji by attending workshop <laughs> through meditation pardon through self exploration either you sit in one place and meditate or you listen or you discuss whatever ultimately the outcome has to be self exploration dialogue dialogue 
Yes. <laughs> In others? The same way, for the others also. Okay. Or maybe through tolerance. No, no. See, tolerance means that I am unhappy within. Okay. But I am somehow trying to accept this unhappiness. That will not do. all these into yourself. Was it very easy or you took time or you imbibed by birth? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I am a co-explorer. So I am saying I am still trying to imbibe. It's not yes. that it is there completely in me. Okay. I am trying to reflect upon it, explore for me and I am able to see the gradual progression. How long uh, has it been at least until so now? So for me I will say that it has been more than 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. More than that, yes. And I am very skeptical about uh, <laughs> me now. <laughs> it no, takes so 25 years to come to even understand and deliver it to others. Yeah, so it so happened you know, that initially when this process started, we were still trying to evolve this whole thing. Now that whole process has set in. It is a part of formal education. So it can happen within few years only. Now we could see that Many faculty members who attended the workshops online during the pandemic, now they have developed into resource persons. So we have our own set of uh, development within also, what we call a sanskar. So that helps us move forward. Could you implement all these in your professional life also? Yes, yes. yes. No, I am asking about so, this experience. Yeah, so wherever I am there, like for example in my college when uh, I was given the charge of director, so I said that, okay, every uh, week we are going to have one sitting together for two hours in that nobody is director, nobody is class 4 employee. We are all human beings. We will discuss the proposals. So by that I could see the kind of harmony that is evolving. So that is always possible. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we take for about three to four years to practice, does it mean that we need to wait for another four years to teach our students? Is no. So, so it so happens no, that when you go to the class, when you go to the class to teach, you do not declare that I am a person with right understanding. You can just say that I am into this process of self-exploration, I am trying to understand and share it with you. So now practicing not something secluded. Verifying within and living accordingly is the practice. That self-exploration is the practice. The moment I complete this session, I can go and teach my students. <laughs> yeah. You can go, but again. <laughs> but the outcome, the outcome may not be so satisfying to begin with because you might not be clear. Like it may be the case that students ask you something and you get caught up. So that would be there in the beginning, but gradually gain more and more clarity and then you can so teaching according to me is not dictating to the other or just using words teaching is reflecting what you are seeing within yeah so that's what i'm saying sharing of information is not teaching teaching is sharing what you are living sir? so if you go that way sir, sir uh, if my expectation is fulfilled by others, if my expectation is uh, fulfilled by others, I may be happy. That lead to be have a harmony. But uh, if I am not, uh, my expectation is not fulfilled, then automatically I will get angry. Then that, that may not, that may not have uh, such a harmony. Right? Yeah. So if you are expecting the other to be happy, okay. you cannot be happy in continuity. But life is uh, uh, wherever you can go. We always expect something, no? Yeah, so now it depends whether my expectation is based on right understanding or my own conditionings. If the expectation is based on conditionings, it does not ensure happiness. Because li life is right from the childhood to old age. We are expecting or depending on others. No, right? not, not that way. In fact, yes. so that's what. The expectation could be based on something outside. Yes. It could also be based on my innate understanding. If it is based on my innate understanding, I am happy naturally. If I am expecting something to happen outside so that I can become happy, I am always enslaved. Yes. There is no continuity. But in family, there is a mutual uh, this one expectation, no? 
See, presently the way we are living in a family, the mutual happiness is not ensured in continuity. Like brother, sister, wife, daughter, and all, all, all people. Yeah. So we are expecting without having clarity, and that's why sometimes expectations are made, sometimes not made. Even though the expectations are made, yes. they may not be the right expectations. Okay. <laughs> Now, please come to the full workshop. We'll discuss at length. <laughs> Sir, everything has some limit, right? Within, within condition... There is some limitation of time, so I'll leave that question right now. <laughs> if yeah. there is no expectations... Yeah, I, I want to add one point. Happy, no? yeah. If there is no expectations, if there is no expectations, you will always be happy, right? I'm not saying that the solution is to be without expectation. For example, when you are asking a question, you expect me to respond. So expectation is innate. Whether that expectation is based on right understanding or without understanding, that is the point. Okay. Yeah, I want to add one more point. Uh, I attended this workshop in 2020. After that, I volunteered 300 workshops as a help desk. So I'm the, seeing this PPT 300 plus times. Okay. So whatever the questions you asked, I asked the question through online. So this is the first time I am attending this workshop offline. So I am volunteering till today. For tomorrow program also, Monday program also, I am volunteering. I am seeing the same slide with a different type of uh, audiences. So 2,200 volunteers will be there. So everybody will posting different type of question for the same slide. So whenever we are studying or undergoing a workshop only for the certificate, so it doesn't work out. Okay, after getting introduced for the introductory workshop, Please join us as a volunteers for every week. Then you can see the slides and then show and then see the participants in a different way. It is called as a co-exploring. Even we use the same word. Am I correct, sir? It is called as a co-explorer. We are not a faculty. All are having the equal types of equal number of neurons in the brain. All are doctorates. All are PG with experience. All are educated people. All are having family. All are brothers to somebody. All are father to son. So we have to co-explore with the different type of participant, learn from each other, share each other. Automatically things will improve. So one more point just I want to add. Say, assume that when you are entering your family, evening time. So from morning to evening you are working, you are going home. You have a wife, you have a children, you have some uh, relatives there. Suppose if you are going with the sorrow mind and uh, what is it, with the doubt, anxious and uh, irritation, all those things. Naturally, if all those people are happy, the moment you enter inside, everybody will become that your state. Okay. So the happiness starts with you first. Where I, if I am sitting here, if I am happy, my surrounding will be happy. If I am not happy, my surrounding will not be happy. Make the surrounding happy. Always you will be happy, the others will be happy. Good boy. <laughs> Actually, one point you said, no, sir. That when we were very young, we were feeling full happiness was there. But when we grew old, you said the happiness is decreased. Is I did not say that. People thing? are saying that. And that is because happiness is going down. Okay. <laughs> so if you are going we'll to be happy during, lunch, during young day. age, no, sir, then it means that self-realization, has it happened during the young age? No, no, that's what I'm denying. I'm saying people generally say this, that during childhood they were happy, now they are not being, not happy that way. So I'm saying that if the happiness is going down, it means they are not moving in the right direction. Ultimately, the happiness has to go up with life, isn't it? Sir. Uh, and now we'll sir? have to put a pause to this. <laughs> sir. So my uh, basic confusion is here, here, sir. Sir, here, this side. Yeah. So why uh, someone should have continuous happiness? Suppose, <laughs> some uh, one, one point, one example. <laughs> Some visionary like Kamarajar, he saw, uh, I mean, uh, the student, I mean, uh, youngsters. Uh, then he became unhappy, he started many schools. Okay. Person like visionaries, for example, this particular uh, anonymity, many visionaries saw something and become unhappy and started good things. So, when I uh, see the real, realistic world, uh, mix it up life. So, the happiness depends upon the others, other factors. I may be wealthy, my family is good, my relationship is good, 
I am prosperous. When I see the someone is begging roadside, if I am happy still, I am a selfish. Is it correct or not? So we can see that there is a world of unhappiness around. Yes. So we can start moving from here. Yes, I can see people are unhappy. And that is why, because they are lacking right understanding, right feeling. So why not to work for education so that everybody is happy? So that opportunity is already there. So what I'm, what I'm seeing here is, unhappiness is required. Because I, not, I cannot be happy always in all the situation. I may be, I may be prosperous. I may be wealthy. I responded to that earlier. So you just try to make out two things here. Whenever you want to become unhappy, note that moment. One thing. Second thing, the unhappiness is given. It is already there. Now from here, I have to move to the happy state. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, no, not that my point. Someone is, you assume that, suppose, suppose Kamarajar was not looking in that way. He cannot start that. Kamarajar saw that unhappiness situation. That is why he took steps to move towards happiness. That is what I'm telling. That is what I'm telling. Yeah, he was happy. That he is what I'm telling. see the happiness in everyone. <laughs> you know, I mean, somebody if he's selfish, somebody's, I mean, the point is, somebody is very selfish. He won't look only relationship and prosperity. Now, my, my, you know, no, no. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thing is, you know, my, my intention is not to, I mean, argue or anything. I mean, someone is selfish, too self-centered person, always happy with relationship and prosperous. They won't see others. That is what. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, uh, feedback forms are given to you, sir. Please fill up. And after the breakup, we will see, sir. And after the breakup, tea break. Sorry. Uh, a small announcement, our volunteers will be circulating a feedback form, so we request the audience to kindly fill it up and hand over it to the participants after the tea break.